Right. I hope uh, we can start. Um, am I clearly audible to you? You can uh, send a message. Uh, I'm be, uh, I'll be there as Sandeep Ajayasekara. So you can select me and uh, send a message just to confirm. Right. Am I audible clearly? Yes, sir. Right. Okay. Okay. Super, super, super. Right. Okay. So, uh, Lamai, welcome to the seminar series organized by JMC Virtual Learning Platform. So, as you all know, JMC is the leading tuition provider for AAT, Chartered Accountancy, CMA, and other professional accountancy education. And our virtual learning arm is JMC V Learning Platform. So, they have organized this seminar series to assist the student, those who are facing the exam falling on August 2023. So thereby, uh, I'm the one who is doing uh, the video lecturing on uh, JMC learning platform for uh, financial accounting and reporting subject. So that uh, I have designed a model paper and that paper was made available a couple of days back. I hope uh, those who got the paper have attempted the paper. And today we'll be discussing uh, the answers of this paper. So always remember this paper was prepared after a careful analysis of your past papers. Right? So I have prepared this paper with much of an effort uh, by a careful analysis of the past papers. Therefore, so if you are facing the 2023 August exam, if you can attempt this paper and make sure you have covered these areas, definitely you will be getting a, a value addition in your real exam paper. So if you are thorough with the areas that I am covering in this paper, so you will be surely uh, getting through in the final paper as well. And feel free to follow our video uh, lecturing series. So I have covered comprehensively on this area. So you all can watch the videos from JMC VLearning platform and uh, you can get ready for the exam. If someone is doing the coming for the physical classes of JMC, right? If you are coming attending the JMC physical classes, you might be already aware that uh, those who are attending the physical classes, there's a 50% uh, discount on the VLearning videos for the last minute, uh, those who are getting prepared. So you all can buy those videos and get ready for the upcoming exam, right? Without taking that much of time, let us move on to the paper, right? Okay. So, uh, let's see. Right. You all know the basic structure of the paper. You all know the basic structure of the paper, am I? Right? So, you all have a 15 minutes of reading time, right? And three hours to attempt the paper. Three hours to attempt the paper. And it says answer should be in one language. So, you cannot use mixed language. So, it should be in one language. The medium that you will have applied and submit all the workings and calculations whatever the workings and the calculations you have to submit and you can use the calculator that you all know you have to be very you have to be very careful with these action verbs we'll see huh? depending on the question what is the action verb they are using you have to alter the answer the way you are writing an answer for a described type of a question is different to the discussed type of a question be very careful with the action verbs uh, Right, then candidates should answer the questions based on the definition of the verb given in the action verb checklist. Right, 100 marks. So, you have to write answers for all the questions. I'm a Prashna Kata Mapi Uttar Liandoni, Monatma Prashna Kapita Magarinda Atar Landa Bear. You have to attempt all the questions in the paper. Right, so what we will do is um, I'll be um, 
taking you through the questions and answers right in a in a brief manner because we have to do it within the allocated time as well right so let's move on with the section a which consists of 20 marks right okay let's move on to the first question let's move on to the first question right okay right look at the first question we live in a vuca volatile uncertain complex and ambiguous world where the accounting has also changed with the impact of fast changing world you are required to briefly explain right look at the action verb explain two accounting trends two accounting trends faced by the accountants right so you are supposed to explain two accounting trends now what i did was i wanted to tell you something right when you are reading a question paper am i what i just did was to start from the beginning right but if you look at really speaking this has nothing to do the really you have to start a question with the requirement i am always recommending you to start with the requirement then you can go to the beginning okay so this sentence whatever the sentence here they are saying this and that but they are asking you to explain two accounting trends right for three marks so first of all we'll attend that part right okay guys now when it comes to the accounting it's evolving right accounting is something we practice in Uh, something we practice and which is really required for the decision makers right so when it, when it comes to every business there are a lot of stakeholders who want to take decisions so it's a ever evolving process accounting is ever evolving it's a living breathing subject so when the world is changing accounting is also changing so it is impacted by different types of trends so if you look at i'll mention several trends right so one particular trend is digitalization right one particular trend is digitalization another trend is outsourcing you can take outsourcing as another trend in accounting then the big data analytics big data is another trend we are having and uh, standardization right is also another trend that we are having and uh, increased monitoring increased regulations is also another trend that we are facing right then there are new accounting concepts such as human capital accounting human capital accounting then uh, we have another trends like uh, information asset information asset accounting right information asset accounting like that there are number of trends there are number of trends now you are not supposed to write everything here i'm just trying to explain little bit of the topic here and i'll move on to the answer right so you are supposed to briefly explain so you you are right so supposed to take like one or two sentences right is a brief explanation only three marks so you have to take only two right so let me let me take one or two i'll explain then we'll look at the answer as well right so first of all if you take the digitalization what would you write right now earlier there were majority of the accounting functions we were using the manual uh accounting processes right so many years back we didn't have that much of an advanced technology so people were using manual accounting functions the transaction recording in the prime entry book and then you are putting them to the ledger prepare in the trial balance so those are those were done manually but now the world is digitalized we are using lot of digital equipment now you and i we are doing this session together in an online platform so the world is digitalized people are using smart equipment every person has a smart device it can be a laptop it can be a computer it can be a smart watch it can be a smart phone so people are into the people are living in a smart world so everything right earlier it was something painful to do the manual work now you can do it in a digital platform so most of the accounting functions right the routine accounting functions are carried out through the digitalized environment in computerized softwares using these smart devices right so we'll see how we are going to write them in a small to sentences i'll i'll first of all i'll bit of exp, i'll little bit explain then i'll show you the answer i'll be explaining four out of these sir mame okko mawata pahedili karanne anne ne dapita time ekka limited ni sir mame edika explain karala answer ekka liyena vidhi wata pennanna i'll explain it a little bit then i'll show you the answer okay right so then i'll take the second one outsourcing now what we need to understand is lamai accounting is not the main function of a business 
if it is coca cola their main function is to manufacture these coca cola bottles and sell in them if it is anchor their main function is to manufacture the milk powder and every business have this non co functions like accounting like financing like hr right maybe the information management like that they have some non co functions <clears throat> nowadays what the businesses are doing is they focus on the co function these non co functions are outsourced to somebody who has an expertise on that area they have the people they have the technology they have the systems right they are expert in that area for us which is non co so especially when it comes to accounting most of the businesses rather than they do doing that accounting by themselves they tend to outsource that to a accounting firm now that creates a lot of business opportunities for us like the asian countries we are very good at accounting so most european and uh, american countries they are sending all the accounting work to us right so that is what we call outsourcing big data right let me take the big data as well so big data right now every person is living with this smart device and every moment of that person every behavior of that person is captured through these smart devices when you log in when you uh, the click stream data when you like when you share when you post something when you search something everything is captured and the service providers like google the facebook the whatsapp and everyone they are capturing huge volumes of data huge volumes of data for every each and every person and those data are analyzed right by the very uh, uh, artificial very sophisticated artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques and for each person they are creating a profile and based on that profile they are creating market values right now we are focusing on this information asset accounting on accounting that value big data is creating some valuable information which is an asset to the business so that accounting part is right now people are working on that right so then again uh, let me tell another one about uh, the standardization a uh, world over accounting should be something standardized so that it will be comparable with the other entities so as long as the accounting is standardized world over so you can take better decisions better decisions that is why earlier we had different accounting standards with different countries different countries were using different accounting standards but right now people are moving towards people are adopting international accounting standards in sri lanka we went on to international accounting standards in 2012 so thereby right now uh, if you look at we are adopting international accounting standard and the other countries too so that is a current trend okay so i'm not going to explain it further let's move on to the answers right let's move on to the answers if you all can cross check your answers that will be much better right so let me uh, share the answer okay look here uh, another one i could have uh, told another trend is cloud computing rather than keeping a physical servers after spending lot of money having people and equipment and servers and everything cooler rooms and everything you can rent it out using the cloud technology that's a very good trend right cloud computing with the cloud technology people can rent out right people can rent out cloud servers the server providers on the requirement so when you are scaling up when you are expanding you can ask for a much higher space larger space right so you don't have to build up a huge physical server facility based on the usage you can keep it and keep all their records keep their records in the cloud cloud computing has made accounting easy as all accounting records can be kept in a cloud server that is a trend so you can see these are little one or two sentences so bakya dekha clear and that's it and outsourcing like i told you outsourcing refers to the use of external companies to do the non co non co functions of the business while businesses can focus on their co business as accounting being a non co function most of the companies are outsourcing it right company ekam accounting karan nathu when a company is solata denawa it's a good trend right it creates a lot of jobs for us okay right okay these are the first two answers 
let me give you another two set of answers digitalization with the advancement of technology all the manual functions are digitalized with smart devices thereby previous routine accounting functions routine accounting function has been automated and accountants can focus on strategic decisions accountants lante me chuti chuti deval kara kara inna nathuwa analytical part ekak strategic thinking pattare yanna puluwa big data all the smart devices are capturing lot of information about people and their behavior these large volumes of data are analyzed uh, to understand the patterns and commercial values that are created right so we are trying to create a commercial value by the understanding right so this is the first part of the question lamai for two of these items you are getting one and a half marks each and you are getting three marks remember there's a higher possibility that accounting trends can be tested okay accounting trends can be tested da right okay i hope you are okay with that part i briefly explained and i showed you the answer as well ogolonta monam hari gatluwa tiyana no you all can always unmute yourself and ask a question na huh? right okay so with that let me move on to the second part of the same question when it comes to accounting companies that put ethics first are more likely to build trust with their stakeholders avoid financial losses and be successful in the long run right you are required to list down two ethics you are required to list down two ethics right like i told you paragraph versus a requirement so basically you are required to list down don't try to explain na explain karan don't na list karanna kiyala ne kiyanne right so for two marks you are supposed to list down two ethics right api balam monawada ethics tika thiyenne kiyala sorry right let me put the ethics so one particular ethic is integrity integrity kala kene avanka kama right and objectivity objectivity kala kene aramunu gata bhavaya then another ethic is confidentiality confidentiality right another ethic is professional competence professional competence is also an ethic then the professional behavior professional behavior is also an ethic right your integrity is an ethic you should be you have to be uh, you know work with your consciousness right uh, conscience then objectivity you can't be biased to anyone confidentiality you have to keep the sensitive data with you and you need to have that competence as an accountant you need to know the accounting standards and the concepts and you have to behave professionally so if you can cover at least two out of this you are going to get the marks ada metarin dekak hari cover kara ganna puluwang uno thin oata lakun tika hambena right please check your answers wage uttara tikat ekka check karala balanna harida kiyala right so far any concerns questions clarifications denata prashna thiyenawada okay da right you all can um, send me in the chat or oh, you all can you know unmute yourself and answer okay the good right okay dela bhai right okay right super let's move on to the second question let's move on to the second question na huh? as per the conceptual framework for financial reporting there are qualitative characteristics which are fundamental and enhancing you are required to state the sub components of fundamental and enhancing qualitative characteristics as per the conceptual framework for two marks right okay now guys when it comes to accounting the objective of accounting and the concepts of accounting are included in 38 page document 38 page document called conceptual framework that is the basis that is the origin of accounting that document says what is the objective of accounting and what are the concepts so based on this conceptual framework we develop the accounting standards and using the accounting standards we prepare the financial statements 
conceptual framework එක නෑ කියන්නේ standards නෑ කියන්නේ accounts උත් නෑ කියන එක. That is the importance of conceptual framework. One of the aspect mentioned in the conceptual framework is the quality of the information. It says the financial statement based information is very important because a lot of stakeholders take their key decisions about a business. Therefore, the information should be a quality information. In order to be a quality information, there are some features, some characteristics that information needs to have. So that is given in the conceptual framework. Right. We'll look at the answer. So there are two types of uh, qualities, right? There are two types of qualities, Lamai, if you take the qualitative characteristics. One is fundamental, right? One is fundamental, fundamental qualitative characteristics. Other one is enhancing qualitative characteristics. Fundamental, fundamental and enhancing qualitative characteristics. Right? So there are basically two fundamental qualitative characteristics. One is relevance. One is relevance, right? One is relevance. One particular is relevance, right? Relevance. One is relevance. Relevance. Other one is faithful representation. One is relevance, other one is faithful representation. These are the fundamental QC. In order to be a quality information, this should be there. In the absence of any of these one, it's not a quality information. Enhancing qualitative characteristics, there are four. The enhancing include, first one, comparability. You should be able to compare. Verifiability, you should be able to verify. Timeliness, information should be provided in time. And finally, understandability, understandability. These are the enhancing qualitative characteristics. In the presence of the information, quality is higher. In the absence, quality is lower. Fundamental can make a tibunot quality and quality name. Even they can relevance and full representation. Relevance can make other only. It should be making an influence. Faithful representation can it should be uh, faithfully represented. You should tell the truth. Enhance in there are four. In the presence of enhancing, quality will be higher. In the absence, quality will be lower. There are four. Comparability, verifiability, timeliness, and understandability. Please highlight this point. Right? You are going to get uh, uh, certain questions on this area. What area I can prashna can the pulva? QC, qualitative characteristics. Okay. Right. We look at the answer. Fundamental, relevance, faithful representation, enhancing, comparability, verifiability, timeliness, and understandability. Okay. Right. So that is a part A of the question. Right. We'll come to uh, part B of the question. Let's see. Right. I'll start from the requirement. Okay. You are supposed to advise. Okay. Advice. You have to give a piece of advice on the accounting requirements for the above scenarios based on Sri Lanka accounting standards for small and medium enterprises. Now we are learning certain accounting standards. No? There are 41 accounting standards such as LKS 1, LKS 2, right? Then LKS 7, LKS 8, like that accounting standards. These accounting standards are specifically applicable for specified business enterprises. There are certain set of entities called specified business enterprises. For them, preparing the financial statements in accordance with this 41 accounting standard is a must. But there can be small and medium enterprises, small companies, medium scale companies. For them, they don't have to use these comprehensive accounting standards. There's a simplified set of accounting standards which are applicable for small entities. We put it in the water, chuti chuti via paravalata, me maha accounting standards on nanny. They can use a simplified version of accounting standards. So that is what we call small and medium accounting standards. And EK part take a call like a syllabus, it's a small part, but this time it can be tested. Me para handa puno. So what do we say? Small and medium accounting standards, 
අහලා තියෙනවා ප්‍රශ්නයක්. We'll see. Right. Uh, part B of the question, right? Part B of the question. Ayurvedu Private Limited commences its operations. Ayurvedu Private Limited commences its operation in 2023 and the entity is classified as a small and medium sized entity. Sandeepa Financial Consultant has been approached by the company to clarify on the following matters. The company incurred 500,000 on a research carried out on new methods to reduce the body weight. Okay. Further, based on the research finding, they are developing a new health drink called Bandi Mattu. Okay. They are developing a new health drink called Bandi Mattu. Every one of us, we have this problem, so they are trying to solve it. For the new health drink development, they have spent 700,000. Right. So simply, they are talking about the research and development. No? Research, they have paid 500,000. Development, they have paid 700,000. We know the intangible asset standard LK38. Right now, we are not talking about that standard. We are talking about same aspect with SLFRS by SME. Kodi I gave it. Right. Okay. The first one, I'll, I'll explain one by one separate. Lamai. Now, LKAS 38 says research expense charge to PNL. Research is just seeking knowledge. There's nothing, there's no commercial value charge to PNL. But the development, if it is satisfying the criteria, you have to capitalize. But if that entity is a small and medium enterprise, it can be research, it can be development. Everything is charged to profit or loss. You are not going to capitalize as an intangible asset. Normal can it entity research PNL development capitalize karan Small and medium na research development to the gama PNL. First advice. Second thing. The company constructed a new showroom. Okay. Birth of rupees 10 million. And it was financed through a term loan. It was financed through a term loan. Borrowing cost uh, up to the completion of the construction of the building was 1 million. It got a 10 million building. You have constructed a building worth of 10 million. And the borrowing cost over the construction period is 1 million. Now, what does LK23 says? You can capital, you have to capitalize the borrowing cost to the qualifying asset. Showroom makeup. Showroom make a hadana kale borrowing cost take a showroom make a dekatukara. It takes time to construct the showroom. So during that construction period, the borrowing cost you have to add to the asset. But what does the SLFRS SME says? SLFRS SME says borrowing cost cannot be capitalized. You have to charge it to profit or loss. Borrowing cost take a qualifying asset KK capitalized current PNL charge current. Look at the third part. The company has 20 employees working. The company is considering the use of actuarial valuation to measure the gratuity liability. Right. LKAS 19. LKAS 19 employee benefit standard. All the accounting standard there. LKAS 19 employee benefits. Double eighty three cutter. Okay. Put me chuti part tech with right in and this gratuity liability when an employee has worked for five years or more than five years when he leaves we have to pay a compensation so how to measure that liability lks 19 is proposing a method called actuarial valuation lks 19 method actuarial valuation if you are a big company if you are a sb Specified business enterprise. So actuarial valuation you cannot apply for a small and medium. For a small and medium, the method is what we call projected unit credit method. Right? Projected unit credit method. Project unit credit method. Okay, projected unit credit method. Okay. Right. We'll see the answers. Balam advises Kela. Research and development research PNL development can be capitalized 
may we will learn normal accounting standards well are the but sme wala mokada kiyanne research ekai development ekama pnl ilangata borrowing cost eka apita capitalize karanna puluwa besme wala kiyanne mokadda pnl ilangata gratuity eka අපි normal accounting standards වලදී the actuarial යන්න බලුවා. මේක මොකද්ද කියන්නේ projected unit credit method එකට තමයි යන්නේ. right these are the differences. right වල බී ලර්නින් පැක් එක ගත්තා නම් මම මේ ගැන comprehensive uh, video එකක් කරලා තියනවා මොනවද තියෙන වෙනස්කම් ගැන. you all can uh, use the video. right look at here the answer. I have to give a piece of advice ha. Huh? First one, both research and development cost shall be charged to profit or loss. Borrowing cost cannot be capitalized. It shall be charged to profit or loss. Actuarial valuation cannot be used for gratuity. Projected unit credit method can be used. Right? Last time they tested was a couple of years back. If I'm not mistaken, 21 July or somewhere like that. Right? Couple of exams back. So there's a high possibility this time it can be tested. SLFRS for SME, a power test train. Okay? Right. 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 Okay, so with that, let me move on to question number three, right? Let me move on to question number three. I right? look at the requirement, huh? state three components, state three components of integrated report. That's our requirements that come from our personal level, my personal given do it negatively. State three components of integrated report. All right, we'll see, right? Integrated report is a process founded on integrated thinking of communicating how an organization's strategy, governance, performance, and prospects lead to the creation of value in the short, medium, and long term. Integrated reporting, you have been asked about the components of integrated report. Now, what is integrated report? Right earlier, I make it time briefly. Earlier, my many years back, this is uh, somewhere back in 1970s. Huh? People were only reporting the financial aspect profit or loss, and balance sheets, and cash flows. Those were presented to the decision makers. So people were looking only at that financial aspect and they were taking the decisions. Only the financial aspect, right? So people were looked at the financial capital of the business and what is the outcome? Okay, financial capital, what is the outcome? Here we have the financial statements. People were taking the decisions. But really speaking, does the business create only the financial values? The business is creating an overall value. Business is creating the human values. They are, they are creating people. They are giving them an opportunity. They are training and developing people. Businesses are creating value to environment. It can be plus value or negative value. It has a value to the environment. Sometimes people are reducing the carbon footprint. They create, they do the planting. But some people, they might be using polythene and plastic and affecting the environment, right? That is the value addition or decrease to the environment, right? And people are creating knowledge, right? Using the intellectual capital, people are creating new knowledge. They are doing research, right? So they are creating some infrastructure like that. If you take the business as a whole, they are creating a massive value, right? So we should not be limited that only to that financial aspect. So thereby, the requirement or the need came, we need to think the overall picture, the holistic view of the overall value creation of the business. So we need a report that provides 
the overall value creation what are the overall capital of the business what are the overall value that they are creating then the decision makers can get take a greater insight and take, make better decision that is why they created something called integrated report part of the integrated report is financial statements apart from the financial statements there are the human capital report the environmental capital report i like that there are a lot of aspects which are covered in the integrated report and in that integrated report there are several components right there are several components your business model is a component your external outlook is a component your stakeholder relationship is a component how you manage your capital is a component how you manage your risk is a component right i think me wage components na na va you know integrated report ekak ketulu it's a massive report ta isara nikan account set ekak itara idenne den mara deval ekak add vela thiyeno right so we'll see what are these components you are supposed to write only three i think samane anni varin gahana prashna ekak integrated reporting and sustainability kind of a mandatory question anni varin gahana so you have to be ready okay right so i have told look at what are the components you have to write only three business model organizational overview and external environment the capital management stakeholder relationships strategy and resource allocation your external outlook of the business the governance how you manage the business what are what is the board of directors role risk management and internal controls මේකෙන් තුනක් ඉතින් අනිවාර්යෙන් මතක තියාගෙන යන්න. There will be a definite question. හරිද? මොකද ඉන්ටග්‍රේටඩ් රිපෝට් කිව්වේ ඔක්කොම බිස්නස් එකක් ගත්තම කැපිටල් වර්ග ගොඩක් තියෙනවා. ෆයිනැන්ෂල් කැපිටල්, හියුමන් කැපිටල්, ඉන්ටලෙක්චුවල් කැපිටල්, ෆිසිකල් කැපිටල්, right like that. There are a lot of capital. And all, from all, all these capital they, we create massive value. And we need a report which communicates the stakeholder about the entire value creation process. අන්න ඒක රිපෝට් එක තමයි integrated report කියලා okay. කියන්නේ. ඒ කියන්නේ ඉතින් මේ report එකේ තියෙන contents components එක තමයි මෙන්න මේ ටික. හරි තුනක් අනිවාර්යෙන් මතක තියාගෙන යන්න ඕනේ. You are supposed to remember at least three. Okay? Right. හරි. මේවා උත්තර ටිකක් දාගන්න මොන හරි දෙයක් තියෙනවා screenshot එකක් හරි ගහගන්න. Right? ඔයගේ answers එක මේ ටික cross check karanda okay right okay mona mari prashna thiyunoth lamai mata chat ekey daanda okay uh, right okay if you have any problem you can ask okay we'll see the third question part b look at the requirement explain the importance of sustainability reporting two marks explain the importance of sustainability reporting two marks we we'll see from the beginning sustainability reporting is a form of non financial reporting that enables companies to convey their progress towards goals on variety of sustainability parameters including environmental social and governance metrics as well as risks and impacts they may face at the moment or in future right now what does the sustainability says sustainability says our resources are limited our resources are limited so when we consume we as the current generation when we consume the resources when we consume resources we should not we should not impact the requirement of the future generation so future generation shall also consume the resources api ena anagata parampara walata resources tiyenne api me okkoma kala vinasa karanna be right walata ehema vinasa karanna be ne right therefore we have to use these resources in a sustainable manner so in the sustainability we are looking at a triple bottom line right we are looking at triple bottom line so one is the profit yes another one is the planet other one is the people 
එරත් අපි කියනවා profit කියලා කියන්නේ ඔයාගේ the economic aspect එක. planet කියලා කියන්නේ ඔයාගේ ecological aspect එක, the environmental aspect එක. people කියලා කියන්නේ social aspect එක, social aspect. right? so earlier like i told you guys businesses were focusing mainly on the financial or the economical aspect no i'll put that as financial aspect people were looking at the money okay whether this business is making enough money to me whether this business is making a profit to me whether they have assets that is what the stakeholders were given a care about they don't care whether they are exploiting the human labor whether they are exploiting the natural resources people didn't give a care right people because they receive information only about the profit stakeholders lata issara toraturu aave profit gena vitarayin meka me minissungen shrame hura kala daragena thiyen me thiyena natural resources tika vinasa karala daragena thiyen people were not aware people were not giving care on that that is why the sustainability thinking provox sustainability thinking emerged and said look here yes financially you should be making a profit but you need to make sure you are taking care of the social aspect the people you should given value to the people right people should be given a value and respect and they should be given some uh, value addition right and at the same time you should protect your planet you are living on it right you should be taking efforts to reduce your carbon footprint right so people started reporting on a sustainability basis on all three aspects not only the profitability what we have done for our people what we have done for our environment now that is an overall view right so with that now you can take better decisions right are profit take enawa thamai minissunta salaka gena da profit take gena avi profit take enawa thamai nature ekata haaniyak karala naha neda right that reporting part came okay i will see the answer i have given a bit of a lengthy answer you don't have to write in a this much of a manner but i wanted to teach this part as well meka ugannana gamamma karanna podda unawa thibuna before sustainability reporting the stakeholders were given mainly the financial information like i told you thereby they considered the financial aspect on their decisions on such decisions the social aspect and the ecological aspect were ignored causing social and ecological problems sustainability reporting provide three financial social and ecological information for the stakeholders for them to make better informed decisions which will ensure resources are reserved for the future generations resources are reserved for the future generations right integrated and sustainability anivaryam ahana lakunu paha definitely ahana godak kala ta ahanne objective of sustainability reporting uh, integrated reporting components deka business model eke monawada thiyenne five marks definite question okay so we have completed the third question as well okay right shall we uh, move on to the fourth question tama me then ena kal okay the ara me mona hari therin nattam me tika kiyen eka hagen inne gath weda gatte amenna me 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 dewal tiyenawa kiyen eka right okay we have a question sir are the sustainability reporting and integrated reporting the same no sustainability reporting is covering only three aspects no financial aspect and the ecological aspect and the social aspect so they want to preserve the resources right there are integrated reporting is much more broader sustainability ke non financial aspect ke nadiya katha karana it's kind of a limited edition but integrated reporting is a broad one you are looking at six capitals so the financial capital human capital and your in physical capital your intellectual capital it talks about the overall value creation attaram business ekak mara value ekak create karana one 
ඒ ක්‍රියේට් කරන වැලියු ක්‍රියේෂන් එක ගැන තමයි කතා කරන්නේ ඉන්ටිග්‍රේටිව් ඉන්ටිග්‍රේටිව් රිපෝර්ටින් ටොක්ස් අබවුට් ද වැලියු ක්‍රියේෂන් ඒක එක පැත්තක් තමයි මේ නැචුරල් කැපිටල් එක සස්ටේනබිලිටි එකට වඩා ඉන්ටිග්‍රේටඩ් එක ගොඩක් ලොකුයි ඒක තමයි කරන්ට් ට්‍රෙන්ඩ් එක සස්ටේනබිලිටි දැන් ටිකක් ඕල් ෆැෂන් සස්ටේනබිලිටි ඉන්ක්ලූඩ් වෙලා තමයි ඉන්ටිග්‍රේටඩ් එන්නේ right so can we get the recording of this session right i think the recordings are available through a we learning uh, package man hitane you will have to check with the we learning our admin people la huh? right so oka gear sare paper ekek tiyenawa neida suppose meka hamma paper ekema tiyenawa suppose integrated reporting sustainability reporting oya aragena balanda pahuge paper pahak 10ak aram balanda every paper it will be tested hamma paper ekema oka hana harada right okay we'll move on to the question number 4 harada question number 4 තමයි ගුඩ් මෙන්න මේ වගේ ප්‍රශ්න අහන්න වලට අන්ක්ලියර් තැන් තියනවා නම් ඒක අහන්න දැට් විල් බී රියලි ගුඩ් හා ඕකේ රයිට් සෝ විල් මූව් ඔන් ටු ද ෆෝර්ත් ක්වෙස්චන් හරි දැන් ඔයාලා දන්නවා ප්‍රශ්න කියවන විදියේ you have to start from the requirement ha easy right look here calculate හදන්න තියෙන impairment loss of the machinery for the year ended 31st of march 2023 two marks what is an impairment value reduction impairment කියන්නේ මොකද්ද වටිනාකම අඩු වීම හානි කරණයක් impairment is due to an internal or external reason value of the asset has been reduced that loss is what we call an impairment right we'll see of this question cost of the machinery of a company is 10 million and the carrying value right carrying value is 4 million okay the company carried out an impairment test hani karana parikshawak on 31st of march and it was revealed that fair value of the machine is 3.5 million there can be a selling cost selling cost of 0.2 million the present value of the future cash flows of the machine is 3.8 million 3.8 million okay i'll briefly uh, explain hari before that uh, sir can you show the answer of question to be to be part right i'll quickly show ha kenek kahala thiyena to be part ekak poddak pennan puluwan hari tag gala screenshot ekak gaha ganna to be okay right sorry i'm also in the screenshot done hari i think okay ha huh? right okay let me come to my question then ha huh? okay okay ha huh? i'll i'll briefly explain the concept of impairment right Okay, look here every asset every asset has a book value or the carrying value we purchase the asset and then we do the depreciation if it is a, a pp sometimes it may be even at a cost only or whatever right so ultimately we have the carrying value of this asset right carrying values of the asset right certain assets are not depreciated like a land right so we have the carrying value carrying value or the book value which are having in our financial statements every asset has another value what we call the recoverable value now you have incurred a cost to purchase that asset no right you have a value that you have incurred on this asset no yaata giyapu wiyedamat thiyena ne vatkamakata how are you going to recover that value i purchased the building spending 10 million 40ak wedan kala building ekak gatta how are you going to recover that value so recoverable value depends on two options you can recover an asset by selling or using if you were to sell the asset what you get is the market value which is what we call the fair value but for you to sell the asset there will be a cost there will be a cost to sell so the net cash flow you are going to generate from the selling asset is fair value less cost to sell when you are using the asset you will be having cash flows over the remaining useful life you will be having cash flows but that is the future value you know if you want to take the today's value you need to take the present value so you need to take the present value of the cash flows for this present value of cash flows we use another term called value in use value in use so you can recover the value of the asset either by selling or using so selling fair value less cost to sell using value in use 
the recoverable value will be out of these two, whichever is higher. Why? Whoever the person is going to take the higher value, right? By selling, if you can get a higher recovery, if you can recover the higher value, you are going for that option. So the recoverable value is always the higher value. So when it compares to carrying value versus the recoverable value, always recoverable value is higher than the carrying value. That is the whole purpose of you purchasing an asset. No, what kind of gun is it? To aching it, what are they? Kamba kara gun? No, biko na lahari paavi chikar lahari. That's the whole purpose. But there can be certain situation. There can be an accident, damage. There can be some external factor. Interest rates are going up, or maybe the government has uh, put a, a restriction, a ban, or something. There can be a political change. There can be a demand supply change like that. There can be a situation. As a result, sometimes the recoverable value may be lower than the carrying value. Then this difference you charge as an impairment loss. If the carrying value is the value that you have already incurred, then at a matter of gila tiyan value ka tamay carrying value ka. Value you can recover is value you are going to recover from the asset. If that is lower, as per the prudence concept, you have to make a provision impairment provision. Okay, right. So let me show you the calculation straight away. The carrying value of this asset is four million. Carrying value of the asset is four million. You have to take the recoverable value. There are two aspects: fair value less cost to sell, and value in use. So value in use is the present value of the cash flows. So from the fair value, I'm deducting the cost to sell. So three point three. So out of these two, your recoverable value is the higher one. 3.8. Thus, 4 million is the carrying value. So you can see carrying value is higher than the recoverable value 3.8. The difference point 2 is my impairment loss. Okay. The difference point 2 million is the impairment loss. Right. Okay. Make it Uttari Daganda, Ma Daganathina Katia Makaraganda, Adisha Liana Villa Madano, screenshot Takaraganda, Ahagin in Nigata, the Katin. The most important thing is you listen, you understand, you clear your doubts. Are your doubts clear, Karagan Nikatama? The most important thing. Okay. For this, you are getting two marks. Kalineki Uttari Kine Kahalati Buna, Sustainability Reporting, Taggar Screenshot Tag Gahagan. So maybe the time I have to do it a little faster, otherwise, I won't be able to cover everything. No. May... If somebody is struggling, uh, don't worry, we uh, we learning team, for those who have we learning students, you all can get the access to the recording. Hmm? Right. Hari. And I thought impairment take answer among up of the other thing. Right. Hari. Impairment. I'm expecting this time a question. Na? Impairment take a prashnyak may paramam bala purutu. Okay, right. Shall we move on to the next part of the question? Hmm? Right. Sir, uh, there's a question. Sir, is recoverable value a gain after sale? No, no. Recoverable value. Right. Recoverable value means you are not going to really. It's it's not something already happened. You are making an estimate. If you are going to sell, what is the value you are going to earn? If you are going to use, what is the value? Not that you are really doing that. You are making an estimate for the future. Definitely, it should be higher. Right? It should be higher. But if it is lower, there is a potential loss. 
potential loss. We are accounting for that potential loss. Right? Okay, good. Right. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, look at the part four of the question. Look at the part four of the question. Okay, right. Uh, you are required to define the term financial instruments for one mark. List two examples for financial assets for two marks. Right, you are supposed to define the term financial instrument for one mark. List two examples for financial assets for two marks. Right, financial instruments are becoming complex with the recent developments in the financial market across the globe. Right. Financial instrument is a small part of your uh, syllabus. financial instrument and they might test on this area. Right. So first question is to define what is financial instrument. It's an easy definition. Financial instrument is a contract. Financial instrument is a contract which gives financial asset to financial asset to one party right financial instrument is a contract financial instrument is a contract which will give financial asset to one party to the other party it will be a financial liability or equity right so financial instrument is a contract it's a contractual instrument between two parties. To one party, it's a financial asset. To the other party, it can be a financial liability or equity. Right? Okay. So that part you have to answer. Financial instrument is any contract that gives rise to financial asset to one entity, financial liability or equity to another entity. Financial asset and financial liability equity. And the next part of the question, they're asking some examples for financial assets. Cash and cash equivalent is a financial asset. Trade receivable assets which are going to get recovered in cash. Trade receivables, yes. Fixed deposits, yes, you are going to recover them in cash. Share investments, yes. Debenture investments, yes. Treasury bill, treasury bonds. You have to write. Basically, two examples, right? Cash and cash equivalents, right? Trade receivables, fixed deposit, share investments, debenture investments, treasury bills, treasury bonds. Those are the financial assets. Those are the financial assets. Okay. Financial liability wallet examples. Ekaiman financial assets or examples or a dalati. Can be tested. The me exams lamai double eighty acre then syllabus change a cutter in the last few Indian double eighties planning on a syllabus change. So the little areas, untested areas are going to get tested. Tama ending test current at the chuti chuti areas test in the Pudwa. Okay. Make a screenshot at the Okay. Right. Okay, so that basically puts into uh, part A, right? Uh, section A. So with that, we are moving towards uh, section B, right? We are moving towards section B. Of the paper, right? Hari lakun visa kapis kokara, then kapis kokara and hadano ilanga lakunu tiha. We are trying to score the remaining 30 marks. We'll see, right? I mean, TNA period to mark again and any confusion known nothing is but in the exam, you are not supposed to do in the same order. You can always pick the easiest questions accordingly. You can do, right? Let's see. Okay, question number five. We'll see the requirement. Question number five, prepare the statement of cash flows. Prepare the statement of cash flows of Minoli Private Limited for the year ended 31st of March 2023 under indirect method for 10 marks. You are supposed to prepare the cash flow statement using the indirect method. Right. I'll start from the beginning. The statement of financial position as at 31st of March 2022 and 2023 of Minoli Private Limited are as follows. 
you have been given the pp depreciation inventory receivable cash and cash equivalent sales capital retained earnings loans gratuity deferred tax trade payables tax send that are there extract of the statement of comprehensive income is given to you profit before interest and tax interest expense profit before tax income tax profit for the year is given to you the following additional information is also provided income tax for the year ended 31st for the year ended included deferred tax uh, deferred tax is also included okay we have to be careful uh, in ad addressing the deferred tax part second one and equipment costing 550 has been disposed during the year ended 31st of march for rupees 400 the carrying value of the equipment at the date of disposal is 200 carrying value is 200 gratuity paid for the year gratuity paid for the year is 50 the new loan obtained new loan obtained for the year is 1000 100 right my uh, cash flow statement is one of the areas you can easily score marks lakunu the higher easy 10 marks you can get right okay um let me do that question for you right i can show you the answer or you want me to do the question you want me to do the question Prashne Hadamuda Netang. Can I show you the answer? Do the question. Right. Okay. Let's do the question. Right. Okay. So we'll do the question. Right. We are doing uh, Minoli Limited's cash flow statement. Right. Right. If you are doing along with me, do it faster. Matekariya Kikpandakaramu. Sensing that our time will be a little limited. Right. Okay. So let me draft the cash flow statement. Minoli Limited statement of cash flows for the year ended 31st of March 2023, rupees in thousands. Right. So So we'll start with the operating cash flow, operating activities. Starting with the profit before tax, for that we'll do the plus or minus adjustments, keep some space. Then we'll have the working capital adjustments. Keep some space and we deduct three things. We deduct interest paid, we deduct tax paid, we deduct gratuity paid. Then we have the investing activities. If some space, we'll have the financing activities. Then we will have the net cash flow. Then we have the opening cash and cash equivalent, closing cash and cash equivalents. So this is the basic format which we are going to use. Cash flow statement. So is there a chance of having the direct method of cash flow statement being tested? Um, based on the analysis, I'm not saying it is impossible. 
right? It is not impossible, can be possible, but uh, the practical sense of testing, uh, AAT Institute would prefer to have indirect method because practically what we need is the indirect method than the direct method. But don't keep any room for, you know, disappointment. Be ready with the direct method as well. Right. If you are ready, I can do the question. Please, someone give an indication saying yes, we can proceed. Right. Good. Right. Okay. Super. Right. Good. Okay. So, you know, the don't spend time on formats. Huh? Don't spend time on formats. You are not getting marks for the formats. You are getting marks for your workings. Right. So, make it quicker and quicker as possible. Right. So, let us do our workings right let us do our workings okay right let's do the workings okay right look at the first one right look at the first we'll start from the additional information right it says income tax for the year include the deferred tax expense for the year ended 31st of march 2023 now generally with the tax i'm opening up the retained earning account now those who are with me, those who are in my classes, they know we have the habit of opening up the retained earnings account. But here, no need because we have the profit before tax. Right? So, we will open up the two accounts. One is tax payable account. Other one is deferred tax account. Right. You know the habit, we will put opening and the closing balances. Maybe opening closing balances. So tax payable, your opening balance is 850 and your closing balance is 1050. 1050. Closing balance is 1050. Deferred tax, your opening balance is uh, 500 and your closing balance 720 right so what does the additional information says additional information says income tax for the include deferred tax as well right so look here the tax expense given in the question is 450 they are saying this tax expense include deferred tax and income tax. Both are there. There are both deferred tax and the income tax. So how to identify how much is the deferred tax, how much is the income tax? It's pretty easy. If you take the difference between the deferred tax. So deferred tax, if you take your closing balance is 720. Your open imbalance is 500. The liability increases means your deferred tax expense is 220. Increase in liability is your expense. Okay. Now you can calculate the income tax 450 minus 220. Your income tax expense is 230. Your income tax expense is 230. Income tax expense is 230. Okay. Right. So easy. Right. Deferred tax expense. I just took the difference between these two. For income tax, from the total tax expense, I removed the deferred tax. So we know that 220 is the deferred tax. 230 is the income tax. Okay. We have dealt with the first part of the question. We have dealt with the first part of the question. Okay. Look at the second one. An equipment costing 550 has been disposed for 400. Carrying value is 200. Right. So, you know, we have to open up the PP account, accumulated depreciation account, disposal gain or loss account. So, you have to open up the PP account, accumulated depreciation account and the disposal gain or loss account. 
and you have to put in the opening and closing balances as usual. PPE, your opening balance is 4,300. Your closing balance, 4,740. Accumulated depreciation, your opening balance, 1,410. Your closing balance, 2,060. Right. Okay. So this is the habit of doing the cash flow statement. Those who are in the class, they know, right? For whatever the additional information here, you have to open up the asset liability accounts. Right. Okay. Then we have to pass the double entries for the information given, right? Okay, we are going to pass the information, double AT, the double entries, right? First of all, it says an equipment costing 550 has been disposed. So what will happen? Debited to disposal 550, credited to PPE 550, right? Disposal here as PPE. Debited to disposal, credited to PPE. Then the next information they are saying this was disposed for 400. RCA dispose kare. Ah, then what will happen? Debited to cash, credited to disposal. Debited to cash, credited to disposal. You know, your cash is your cash flow statement. Under investment activities, you will write machine disposal. Debited to cash, debited 400. Debited to cash, debited 400. Debited to cash, debited 400. Right? Debited to cash under invest activities, non current asset, no? Right? Credited to disposal gain or loss, 400 as cash. 400 as cash. Okay? Debited to cash flow statement, cash, and credited to disposal. Finally, the carrying value of the equipment is 200. So now we have the cost 550, carrying value 200. Cost is 550, carrying value is 200. So you know that the accumulated depreciation is the difference, no? 350. From 550, when you deduct 350, you will get 200. So the accumulated depreciation is 350. So you have to remove that, no? Remove that now. Debited to accumulated depreciation 350. Credited to disposal gain or loss 350. So we'll pass accumulated depreciation here as the disposal. Here as the disposal. Okay. Right. Don't try to close the T accounts. We'll just pass the entries. Finally, we'll do the closing remarks. Done. There are two other adjustments. Right. Third one says gratuity paid for the year is 50. So I have to open up the gratuity liability. I'll be opening up the gratuity. I have to put the opening and the closing balances. Gratuity opening balance is 500. Your opening balance is 500. Your closing balance is 590. Right. They are saying the gratuity payment is 50. As per the question, they say gratuity payment is 50. So that's cash outflow. No? When you pay the gratuity, cash credit, your cash comes down. Debited to gratuity liability. Uh, debited to gratuity liability 50 as cash. Right? Debited to gratuity 50 as cash. Credited to cash flow, gratuity paid 50. Gratuity paid 50. In your cash flow statement, gratuity paid 50. Debited to gratuity liability, credited to gratuity paid 50. Gratuity paid 50. Okay. Right. Finally, loan. 
they are saying the new loan obtained. So we have to open up the loan account. So you can see the opening balance is zero. No? Opening balance is zero. Your closing balance is thousand. Right. Opening balance is zero, closing balance is thousand. Question says, you have obtained a new loan of 1,100. When you obtain a new loan, what will happen? Debited to cash. Debited to cash. Salary will debit to know. Under financing activity, you can put loan obtained. Debited to cash, 1,100. Loan obtained, debited to cash. Under financing activity, loan obtained, 1,100. Debited to cash. Credited to loan. Loan negative credit, you know, cash kiala thousand one hundred. Okay. Right. Okay. So those are the adjustments which are given in the question. What am I to which adjustment ticket? Right. Now you know what we have to do. Once you have done all the adjustments, Lamai, you have to start from the beginning. Look at the balance sheet given. Find out the items which are not taken to the workings. Yanna gaani mulata financial portion ne item making item ke balagi ne ande. Methein ta apu natiye hoti hai na. If there are cash flow impact, take it to the cash flow statement. We'll see. We'll do. Right? PP done. Right? So property equipment here. We have taken care of. Are the Right. Accumulated depreciation also done. It is a Inventory. Uh, inventory has increased. 2370 minus 1450. Inventory has increased by 955. Inventory increase means you are purchasing inventory. No? That's a cash outflow. Right. Under working capital. Increase in inventory. 955 is a cash outflow. Trade receivable has also increased. 4450 minus 2536. When trade receivables are increasing, our debtors are not giving cash to us. We are making the sales and sales and sales, but they are not paying. So there's a cash outflow. So then increase in trade receivables is a cash outflow. 1950. 14,914. Okay. Then you have the cash flow closing opening cash balance is 1,320. Your closing cash balance is 2,280. Opening and closing cash balances. State debt capital has not changed. Retained earning has changed. That is given. Retained earning is changed. I retained earning when I was here. Retained earnings. Then we will see. Where are you? Retained earnings. Then we will see. Then we will see. Right. 3660 versus 1460. That is there. I can see. I can see. Long term loan taken, gratuity taken, deferred tax taken, trade payables. Trade payables has been reduced. Trade payable reduced by 90 baht. Decrease in trade payables. When there's a decrease in trade payables, you are we are paying for our suppliers. Trade payable are doing a we are paying for our suppliers. That's a negative cash flow. 91. Okay. We are coming towards the last piece of information, right? Last piece of information. We have the PNL extract. We have the PNL extract. What does it say? Right? Profit before in interest and tax is 2900 Interest expense is 250 Interest expense is 250 Do we have any interest payable? interest payable. We don't have any interest payable. That means current year interest expense 250 has been paid in cash. Current year interest expense is 250. You have paid it in cash. Right. Now, 
interest expense in your PBT, in your PBT, we have deducted 250. Interest is not in the PBT, but what we need to deduct is from here. Interest paid, we have to deduct here, 250. Then, we double it. We are going to add the interest 250. We are going to add the expense here. Expense is not going to add the expense. We are going to add the expense. Really, what you have paid, you have to deduct from here, the interest paid. You know that I have told you, those who are in the class, you can put it even under financing activities. Methan they come permitted. Right. Then the next item is tax. Profit before tax. We have to take 2650. Okay. close We can start closing the T accounts. I'll start with the loan account. The loan account is close karan 1,100,000. That means you have paid loan 100. Loan is given to you. See ya. Gratuity is given to you. Gratuity expense. Right? Gratuity expense is given to you. 50 plus 590 minus 500 is 140 is the gratuity expense. I can cut it out of the current disposal gain or loss. We have a gain neither 400 plus 350 minus 550. We are at a gain of 200. Depreciation for the year 350 plus 2060 minus 1410. 1000. Depreciation for the year is 1000. Then property plant and equipment purchase, if any, 550 plus 4740 minus 4300, 990. Defer tax, tax payable, tax paid, 850 plus 230 minus 1050, 30 rupees paid as paid in. Cash. 30 rupees paid in cash. Okay. Right. So we'll put We'll put one by one to the cash flow statement. Tax paid tax paid 30. Tax paid 30. Tax paid 30. I'll put it here. Tax paid 30. Tax paid 30. Tax paid 30. Tax paid 30. Deferred tax is okay. PPE purchase 990. PPE purchase is a cash outflow 990. Depreciation. Even in your PBT, we have deducted depreciation. At the profit before tax, we have already deducted depreciation. But it's non-cash expense. No? Depreciation is a non-cash expense. What we need is a cash flow. So I'm going to add back depreciation. Thousand. Depreciation added thousand. Disposal gain 200. In my PBT, disposal gain is added. Disposal gain is under other income I have added. But disposal gain is a non-cash gain. The real cash received we have already taken to the investment activity. It's a non-relevant and non-cash item. So I'll be removing the gain. Plus so gain minus disposal gain 200. Minus disposal gain 200. Then uh, gratuity expense 140. Gratuity expense 140. Once again, gratuity expense is deducted in my profit before tax. Magi me PBT, Gratuity expense is deducted. 
we have already accounted the gratuity payment. I double deduct in the expense are deducted the payment. We are going to add back the expense, deduct in the actual payment. So adding back the gratuity expense 140. Then the loan paid 100. Loan nega give a tiyan or rupiah siya. Right. Okay. So that's it. Now we can do the calculations. 2650 plus 250 plus 1000 minus 200. 3840 minus 955 minus. Eight hundred and eighty. So my net operating cash flow is five hundred and fifty. My net investment cash flow, net investing cash flow is five ninety. Net financing cash flow is thousand. So the net cash flow will be five fifty minus by ninety plus thousand nine hundred and sixty. So that will come to the total of closing cash and cash equivalents. Right. Right. If you have any questions, concerns, you can ask. Right. So we have completed the cash flow question. Right. Are you all okay? Okay. Okay with the question. Any concerns, clarifications? Do you all need any time? Just let me know. Otherwise, we can move on to the next question. Okay, the Prashna Tirunangahanda. Good. Any doubt you can clear, you can ask. Right. So please move to the working spot here. Ideally, you should have done the paper. Paper Karla so that you can actually mark the answers while I'm doing. Huh? Am I good to go to the next part because our time is running and we have to do some major areas which are left. Good. Okay, I think we can, uh, are good to move, right? Okay. Right, I have the answer here. So we'll get the same 960 as the net cash flow. These are the workings that we have done. Okay, so I'm not going to uh, repeat the same on that area. Right. We'll come to question number six. We'll see the question number six. Kind of a difficult question. We'll see. Difficult and a different question. Right. We'll see. Right. So you are supposed to provide the double entries for the year ended 31st of March 2023 of Manuka Private Limited referring to SLFRS 15 revenue for five marks. From the revenue standard SLFRS 15, I have put up a question, right? We'll start from the beginning. Manuka Generators has sold a generator worth of 3 million 
right? Manuka generator has sold a generator worth of 3 million to GMC on 25th of March. On the same day, the amount was settled. Generator was delivered. Generator was delivered to the office premises on 30th March. The installation was complete. Installation was complete on 1st of April. JMC started using the generator, started using the generator on 3rd of April. Next one. Manuka has rented out. Okay. Manuka has rented out generator to double AT on 30th March to continuous five days. Per day charge is 25,000. Per day charge is 25,000. Double AT has paid 100,000 to Manuka, of which 50% is an advance payment and the balance is a refundable deposit. Balance is a refundable deposit. Right? So we are going to tackle this type of question. We have been asked to provide the double entries. Right? Okay. Let's see. This is a question from the SLFRS 15 revenue standard. Huh? Kind of a difficult standard. So uh, there's a high possibility that you will be get a question like this. Right, we'll see. Right, there are two aspects now. There are two aspects. One is to JNC, Manuka has sold a generator. The next one, uh, Manuka has rented out a generator to double AT. Those are the two scenarios, right? When uh, Manuka has sold the generator, the value of the generator is rupees 3 million. Value of the generator is rupees 3 million. They say, they entered to the transaction on 25th. The item was and uh, the customer has paid. Right? Customer has paid. In the other side, they have received money. They received money on 25th. They delivered the uh, particular generator on 30th. They delivered the generator on 30th. Installation was completed on 1st of April. 1st of April and the customer has started using it on 3rd of April. And the company's financial year ends on 31st of March. Right? The company's financial year ends on 31st of March. Company's financial year ends on 31st of March is the year end. Right. Now the question is, can we recognize the revenue or not? Can we recognize the revenue or not? So, Manuka, you have to always take the point of view of seller in a revenue transaction. Now, don't think from the buyer's point of view. Right? You are going to take the point of view of seller. Manuka being the seller has sold a generator to the JMC to JMC, right? Which is worth of 3 million. They entered to the transaction on 25th and the buyer has settled the amount on the same day. Item was delivered to the premises on 30th. So it's a generator, you are going to deliver it to the installation because you have to do some wiring and stuff. No, just giving a generator will not be enough, right? So the people, they have to do the wiring part and the fixing part to make sure the generator is working. Make sure that the generator is working. Right? So, you have to do the installation. Okay, this place, okay, this wiring, and you have to do. It was completed on 1st of April. Using, James started using it on 3rd of April. The question is, when should you, st when should you recognize the revenue? Right? The promise was to generate a generator. 
when was the when shall you start recognizing the revenue tamai mada uttarayak denna kavuru hari what should be the date metana thiyena dawas walayin what should be the correct date to recognize the revenue Twenty fifth, thirtieth, first of April, third of April. We got one answer saying twenty fifth of March. One answer saying thirtieth March. Right. One answer saying third of April. The correct answer is first of April. when the installation is completed you are selling a generator just delivering the generator will not be enough you need to make sure it's working so you have to do the completion of the installation your people you need to send doing the fixing and the wiring and everything make sure it is completed now it is at a workable condition jmc might use it 3 days or 4 days or 1 month later that's a different story your promise will end once it is given in a working condition which is falling on 1st of april 1st of april so guys uh, really speaking right really speaking right you have to recognize the revenue of the good when the promise is delivered when the performance obligation is satisfied so here sale of a generator right your performance obligation is satisfied on 1st of april when the installation is also completed right therefore up until this point the 3 million is an unearned income unearned income it will be a revenue from 1st of april ega revenue ekak kenne 1st of april illa etta kalle ekak unearned income ekak right unearned income so what will be the double entry for the generator generator to gmc with a double entry debited to cash 3 million credited to un earned income which is a current liability 3 million unearned income right until the promise is been honored until the performance obligation is delivered you can't recognize the revenue pa porondu vechade venakam porondu vechade ishta venakal aadayam aduna ganna be so the answer is debited to cash credited to unearned income it is not revenue revenue kela dammo uttare varadi vagin ahana double entry ekiyanne kiyala right okay i hope you got the point right next one what point ekata iruna kiyala man hitana next one uh manuka is renting out the generator to double lady now here it's a sale of a good metana thiyena sale of a good ekak here is a service you are renting out the generator you are renting out the generator you are not selling you are renting out if you are renting out right it's a service service you have to recognize depending on the time right so based on the service period so what they are saying they are going to give this service for 5 days 30th march 31st of march 1st of april 2nd of april and 3rd of april i told you our year end is 31st of march so it's a 5 day service each day they are charging 25000 they are charging 25000 each day they are charging 25000 okay 25000 25000 and here for this period even 25000 25000 So this twenty five thousand you cannot recognize. It's an unearned income. Tam service ke deal ani ani. Up until thirty first of March, only two days have gone. So you can recognize revenue of fifty thousand. Make a, yes, you can. Two days have gone. Twenty five thousand into two fifty. 
25,000, you can recognize the revenue. This 25,000 into 3, you cannot. You cannot. Okay. And uh, double AT has paid 100,000 to Manuka. Of that 50,000 is an advance. Remaining 50,000 is a refundable deposit. Again, Manuka Panasdaha Kambilatina. Bedi Urnepa the Abu Dindoni Panasdaha. Right? It's a refundable deposit. Refundable deposit, you cannot take it to the revenue. Eka revenue we get in the It's a separate liability. You got 50,000 and you had refund. A refundable deposit take karantina. Mage generator aga with the yenni. Mang kokatata refundable deposit take gana. Buy and buy. Generator apo dunna, panas the hapo dinna. It's not a revenue. This 50,000, yes, the advance, you can consider it to be the revenue because two days have gone. Ahimanang Abibalamu generator rented to AT. Generator rented to AT. What is the double entry? Debited to cash. Sali Hambeno Lakshya. They received cash. They can recognize revenue 50,000. Ne? Credited to revenue 50,000. Ardavas they get 25,000 into 2. Yes. Balance 50,000 is a liability refundable deposit. It's a current liability 50,000. Refundable deposit is a current liability 50,000. Right, please check the answers. Okay. Right. Okay. So that is a kind of a question you might get from SLFRS 15, the revenue standard. I did both good and a service. Both good and a service. Okay. Right. Let's try to do a question on a lease arrangement. Right, let's try to do a question on the lease arrangement. Right, please come to uh, part B of that paper. Kesara PLC leased a machine from Sampat Leasing on 1st of April 2022. 1st April 2022, rupees 200,000 was made as a down payment. Down payment 200,000. The balance was agreed to be settled in three equal installments of 400,000. Interest rate is 10%. Discounting factors have been given for the three years. Useful life of the machine. Useful life of the machine is four years. The ownership of the machine does not transfer, not transfer at the end of the contract right useful life does not transfer at the end of the contract right it will not transfer at the end of the contract okay right we'll see the company uses the revaluation model for the machine the machine was revalued at 800000 machine was revalued at 800000 Demonstrate how the above transaction should be reflected in the financial statements. Statement of financial position and uh, profit or loss. Right. It's a leasing question, leasing adjustment. You need to show how you are going to reflect that in the financial position and the profit or loss. Right. Okay. Let's see how we are going to tackle this question. Right, so we are going to deal with the leasing question. 
in a lease there are two aspects no whatever the lease there are two aspects one side you have the right of use asset one side you have the right of use asset which is a non current asset on the other side you have the lease liability right these are the two aspects in a lease one side you have the right of use asset other side you have the lease liability okay right first of all we will take the right of use asset right now for you to buy this particular machine right kesara has spent 200000 as the down payment so that is when we are paying the down payment credited to cash debited to right of use asset you are spending that cash which is in your hand to get the use of that asset athe thiyena salli biyadan karanne me wahane me machine ekak pawichi kana aithiya ganna ne so we'll take the down payment here down payment is part of my right of use asset part of my right of use asset right then the other part of the asset right then me machine ekak ganna athe thi bicha salli walin pawichi kara lakshya deka for the balance i am taking a lease facility to the balance i am taking a lease facility right lease facility of this lease facility i need the present value right i need the present value that means the value of the lease facility you have taken they have not they have not given that lease value present value of the lease cash flows directly so you are supposed to calculate we will try to calculate that one for that we will be using a work in now make it a work in ekak pawichi karanna let me do a work in right let me do a work in right uh if you are okay with it i'll do the work in here metana ma work in ek karanna work in number 1 present value of lease right so we have the years 1 2 and 3 the installments are 400 400 and 400000 the discounting factors are 0.91 0.83 and 0.76 so you can calculate the present value ne ecd can calculate the present value okay 400000 into 0.91 364000 400,000 into 0.83, 332,000. Yeah, 32,000. So, 400,000 into 0.76, 304,000. So, if you take the total, 364 plus 4, you'll get 1 million. Uh, that is the opening lease liability. One million, right? So you can take it here. Uh, even your opening lease liability is one million. Really speaking, you are spending one point two million on installments now, right? So you are paying four hundred thousand into three one point two million, right? That extra two hundred thousand is the interest now. you have taken a lease facility of 1 million but after you make the payment you are paying extra 200000 that is the interest right so we have removed the interest to take the present value right opening lease liability is 1 million right so the down payment and the lease facility together you will get the cost of the asset 1.2 million 1.2 million is the cost of the right of use asset this from this i said you have to deduct the depreciation depreciation you have to deduct the depreciation we know that 
when it comes to the depreciation lamai always remember depreciation depends on the ownership transfer ownership transfer if the ownership transfer is yes you have to depreciate over the useful life if the ownership is not transferred you have to depreciate over the useful life over the lease period which is lower right depreciation depends on whether you are getting the ownership or not why if you are getting the ownership you are going to use the asset for the entire useful life now accordingly you have to depreciate but if you are not getting the ownership after the lease period you are going to give that back so you have to depreciate for the period you are using either useful life lease period which is lower in this question ownership is not transferred useful life is 4 years useful life is 4 years lease period is 3 years so which is lower 3 years so i have to depreciate it over a period of 3 years so 1.2 million divided by 3 years 400000 so accordingly your net book value is 800000 is 800000 and the question is giving you a revalued amount so don't worry in this question the revalued amount is also 800000 therefore there's no revaluation gain no revaluation gain or loss right so you can keep the asset at the net book value you can keep the asset at the net book value okay right so i have covered the asset side huh? to the asset side uh, down payment we have to take opening lease plus any direct expenses if there's any penny from that you have to deduct the depreciation depending on the ownership transferred or not If there is any revaluation gain or loss, you have to adjust. But there is nothing. Okay, right. Then we look at the lease liability side. So you have this is particularly a loan. You have taken a loan of one million, and you have to accumulate interest for one year. So we will add interest. We will add interest. That is one million into ten percent, hundred thousand. You are adding interest. For the overall year, when you have taken a lease facility for the entire year, you have to accumulate the interest, no? Right? Okay. In the meantime, there's a question: What do we do if we have a revaluation gain or loss? We have to account for it. Gain added to the asset, credited to the revaluation reserve through OCI. Loss credited to the asset, debited to the uh, PNL. You are going to debit that to the PNL. as a revaluation loss first time revaluation loss charge to profit or loss right then okay you took the lease facility 1 million over the year you are accumulating interest end of the year you are making the loan installment payment right so so you have to deduct the installment installment is 400000 so your closing lease liability is 700000 your closing lease liability is 700000 right this closing liability you have to divide this closing liability you have to divide as current and non current you are supposed to divide this as current and non current you know that you have to divide how much is current How much is non-current? How to do the current part? It's easy. You get the next installment. You get the next installment, which is four hundred thousand. From that, deduct interest on next installment. Why? current portion is the next year loan repayment no if you take the next year installment it has the next year interest next year interest belong to the next year but we need the next year loan repayment 
So from the next year installment, when we deduct the next year interest, we can get the next year loan repayment. That is our current portion. So our remaining loan balance is 700,000. At 10%, there will be an interest of 70,000. So the current portion is 330,000. 330,000 is the current portion. So you now we can easily calculate the non-current portion. Take the total lease liability, total closing lease liability is 700,000. From that deduct the current portion. 330,000. So you will arrive at 370,000 as the uh, non-current portion. 330 is the current portion, 370 is the non-current portion. Okay. Right. Please uh, take down the uh, working. We are not still at the final answer. This is the working to support our final answer. Right. Am I? Are you okay with the question? Any clarifications required? On hari. Pehdeli kiri mo ni the liya kan vila pehdi the so that I can move on to the answer. Me kita am uttari tapi aavi ne. After taking this down, please give me an indication whether you are OK so that I can move on to the next part of the question. Okay, right, good. Oh, thank you. Right, so we have to uh, do the final answer part, right? So this is, that is the work in, uh, not the answer. Now let me show you the final answer. They are asking the balance sheet extract. They are asking the balance sheet extract and the PNL extract. Right, they ask in the balance sheet extract and the PNL extract. So in the balance sheet under the non-current assets, you have the right of use asset. Right of use asset. So you can show the right of use asset at the value of even the revalued amount is the same, eight hundred thousand. Eight hundred thousand under the non-current asset. Then under the non-current liabilities, you have the lease liability. That we have already calculated it to be 370, 370,000. Under current liabilities, you will have another lease, the current portion of the lease liability, which is 330,000. 330,000. Then under PNL, you have the depreciation expense. Depreciation expense is 400,000. So we will deduct. Then the interest expense, 100,000. 
thousand. So those are the two items which will be in the PNL, right? Okay. You are getting marks part, make a current donor. So, market working economy with the rain. You are getting marks for the answer. Okay. Right. Please quickly take this down. So, with that, uh, we have completed question number six. We are moving towards question number seven. I am moving towards question number seven. Question number seven, I have put from uh, deferred tax. Question number seven. I have put a question from deferred tax. So most of the students are struggling with deferred tax, which is a very easy lesson. We'll see how we are going to tackle a deferred tax question. In the question number seven, part B is uh, borrowing cost. Another area people are struggling, borrowing cost. So we'll try to tackle uh, two questions, one from deferred tax, other one from borrowing cost. Right, we'll see. Right, look at this question. Right, you have been asked, you are required to calculate the deferred tax asset or the liability. You are supposed to calculate the deferred tax asset or the liability as at the year end for five marks. Okay, we'll start from the beginning. The following information was extracted from Papito Limited's books of accounts as at 31st of March. Details of the non current assets are given. Below building 25,000, right? Building 25,000, uh, accumulated depreciation 10,000, accumulated capital allowance 15,000, machinery cost is 15,000, accumulated depreciation 8,000, accumulated capital allowance 5,000. The provision for gratuity, the provision for gratuity was 5,000. Deferred tax liability as at 31st of April is 1005. Papito Limited pays, uh, pays income tax at a rate of 28% per annum. 28% per annum, right? 28% per annum is the interest rate. Okay. Right, so these are the areas touched in the question. You might get a similar question. Let's see how to tackle, how to tackle a deferred tax part. Which, which is very easy. It's not a difficult question. Deferred tax is my future tax. Deferred tax is you are calculating the tax impact of the future and you are trying to pass an entry to neutralize the effect. Right? So there can be temporary differences which are creating an unnecessary fluctuations in the your profits or losses due to these tax expenses. You are trying to neutralize the effect by throwing a deferred tax at this. So simply what you are doing is Lamai, you are going to perform the future taxable profit calculation. So as simple as that. Let's see how we are going to tackle this, this one. Right, easy, right? Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to do a future tax calculation, right? So there were several items. I'll be putting here the description. There were items of buildings. Then we have the machinery and gratuity. This is an asset. This is an asset. This is a liability. And I'll be taking the total impact as well. Right. Okay. We'll take one by one item. Right. So first of all, we'll be taking the right the carrying value right we'll be taking the carrying value of the assets and the liabilities you know the carrying value of a building is cost minus accumulated depreciation right so 25000 minus i'll put the calculation as well 25000 minus 10000 here 
Here it's 15,000 minus 8,000. The accounting carrying value, right? The accounting carrying value is basically from the cost already claimed depreciation we are deducting. What we are getting is the future depreciation. So 25,000 minus 10,000 is 15,000. 15,000 minus 8,000 is 7,000. Gratuity, which is a liability, you know, I'll be taking that as a minus figure 5,000. Don't hurry on putting a total. We'll just take it like this. I'll tell when we, when are we supposed to take the total. This accounting carrying value, from that you are going to deduct the tax base. The accounting carrying value is cost minus account accumulated depreciation. So tax base of a PP is simply cost less accumulated capital allowances. So simply from the cost already claimed capital allowances we have deducting, whatever we are remain with is the future capital allowance. So simply it's 25,000 minus 15,000. Here 15,000 minus 5,000. So what I'm getting is here 10,000. Here is also 10,000. For the gratuity, let me put a working as well, right? Working number one, working number one, tax base of gratuity. How do we calculate the tax base of gratuity is from the carrying value, which is 5,000, we deduct amount deductible for tax amount deductible for tax when liability gets settled when liability gets settled right. when you are settled in the gratuity liability how much can you deduct so 5000 is my current provision when you settle that 5000 tomorrow can you deduct entire thing for tax? Yes. So entire thing can be deducted. Thereby the tax base will be zero. Tax base will be zero. Right. Now you can get the resulting answer, which is what we call the temporary difference. So 15,000 minus 10,000 is 5,000. 7,000 minus 10,000 is minus 3,000. Minus 5,000 is minus 5,000. Right? So 3,000, 5,000, 3,000, 5,000. Altogether, my total net impact will be minus 3,000. Right? That means my overall in the future, my table profit is coming down. That is why it's a minus. So this is a deductible temporary difference. This is a deductible temporary difference. So in the future, I'll be paying lower taxes. Right? In the future, I'll be paying lower taxes because my overall taxable profit will come down. Right? Here, Anagata depreciation is adding back, capital allowance is deducted. So 5,000, your tax or profit will increase. But here, both are coming down. From the machine, I'll be paying lower taxes. From the gratuity, I'll be paying lower taxes in future. So it's a deductible temporary difference. So this, when you multiply by the tax rate, when you multiply by the tax rate of 28%, what you will get is the closing deferred tax Asset like this deductible temporary difference multiplied by the tax rate, you will get closing deferred tax asset. So your closing deferred tax asset 3000 into 28 percent, 840. 
So this is the answer. For this answer, they are asking to calculate the closing deferred tax asset or the liability asset 31st of March. For this 840, you are getting five marks. Okay, right, please take this down. Right. Okay, let's see the question. So there's an open imbalance of deferred tax liability doesn't uh, need to adjust that, right? So they're not asking about the deferred tax income or deferred tax expense or the reversal. If they've asked it, yes, I have to uh, use it, right? Let me show uh, in case, if they have been asking the deferred tax asset or the reversal, what would be the answer, right? So I'll be taking deferred tax asset or the liability. So both are in a single account. So they say they have an opening balance. They have an opening deferred tax liability of 1,500. Yeah, 1,500. Okay. Opening deferred tax liability is 1,500. But closing we are getting a deeper tax asset because in the future we are going to pay lower taxes. Therefore, in future you are going to have a deeper tax asset. Right? So, we are creating the closing balance. Now, afterwards it should be your opening balance should be an asset. No? Right? The next year opening balance in order to be a debit side, it should be coming in the credit side. Therefore, your deferred tax is a reversal of to the PNL. You are charging 2340. You are charging to the PNL as a deferred tax reversal. 2340. So this part is not asked. Make a halana exam. They are asking only the close in deferred tax asset or the liability. If they are asking the deferred tax expense or the reversal for the year, do this. Put the opening asset or the liability, closing asset or the liability, different charge to the deferred tax income or the expense. Okay. Right. Okay. Am I clear? So can we move on to the next question then? May part take a halane since uh, Muhammad Das only I explained. Right. Can I move on to the uh, next part of the question? Part B. Yes. Can anyone send me a confirmation? I'll do the first part. Yes. Good. Right. Okay. Good. Right. So let's move on to the Borrowing cost question, right? Sorry. Uh, 
next part of the question borrowing cost right we'll see what is the question right okay so once again uh, this is also an area that i'm expecting that this time there'll be a question so you are supposed to calculate the borrowing cost to capitalize under the showroom as at 31st of march for five marks you're supposed to calculate huh? you don't have to do any uh, uh, explanations or anything just to do the calculation right demo company initiated a showroom construction project the project was funded from pool of funds uh -huh. in the borrowing cost standard they are saying there are two ways of obtaining the loans no either a specific loan you are specifically taking that loan for a project then you are supposed to capitalize the net borrowing cost a project take a loan net borrowing cost from the borrowing cost deduct the investment income capitalize but if you are taking the funds from a general pool of funds you can have facilities do you know a project take a killer run you haven't taken it specifically to a project it's a general facility available within the business you are taking some money in such case you have to capitalize the gross borrowing cost you cannot net off any investment income right the pool of funds available include uh, we got commercial bank 40 million bank of ceylon 20 million hat national bank 15 million hsbc 25 million so if you take the total here 40 60 uh, 40 20 60 75 100 okay the project value was 50 million. That can pool like a you know, 100 project like 50 with right? Specific loan, you know, come on. So in your pool, you have 100, they are taking only 50. Construction commenced on 1st of April. The investment income, investment income earned from investing excess cash in the pool of funds for 1 million. Make a better name. Make a, you are not going to net off that. Just to you know, confuse yourself, we have given that investment income. Because in a pool of fund, you have to capitalize the gross borrowing cost. The active construction was suspended. Active construction was suspended on 15th May 2012 due to an unexpected delay in material supply for 15 days. Right. Now, under the borrowing cost standard, it says sometimes due to various reasons, your construction, your creation will can be suspended temporarily. Due to a particular reason, you have to stop it for maybe one month or two months or 15 days like that. Then the standard is asking the question, right? Why have you stopped? I make another agree. Is it something you have planned? Is it something you know? Something uh, pre-planned reason, right? Something that you expected to stop. Why you plan? Then again, not Right? Maybe is, is it part of your construction process, or is it something unexpected, something unplanned? They are asking the question whether it is expected or unexpected, planned or unplanned. If it is something planned. If it is something expected, continue the capitalization. Take a plan. Project take a plan. Take a quarter second. Capitalize correct. It's okay. But if it is something unexpected, unplanned, for that period, you cannot capitalize. For that period, you have to charge the borrowing cost to PNF. Right? So, what does the LK23 says? If an asset is a qualifying asset, what is a qualifying asset? Asset takes substantial period of time to get ready. So that construction period, you can capitalize the borrowing cost to the asset. Rather than charging it to PNL, you can add that to the asset. Right? If it is a specific loan, net borrowing cost, pool of funds, gross borrowing cost using the capitalization rate. If the active development is suspended, if it is planned one, expected, continue capitalization. Unplanned, unexpected, stop capitalization for that period, charge it to profit or loss. Okay. So this is something unexpected. Unexpected delay in materials. 
showroom was ready to be used ready to be used by 31st of december it was mokadda kiyanne the borrowing cost capitalization should stop should cease when the asset is ready for the use available for the use sampoorna me okkoma building ekke kana antima ma velikate dakwa mede ivara wenna onne once it's overall available stop however the management commenced using the machine commenced using the showroom on 1st of february 31st december wenakota ma hari ne maasaya ke golu ithin auspicious time ekak ena kalari indala thiyena that we cannot allow to capitalize companies financially ends on 31st of march right. calculate the borrowing cost to be capitalized okay right. so we'll can do the borrowing cost capitalization right for this right i have to do a working first i need to calculate something called capitalization rate for a pool of fund la mai you have to calculate the capitalization rate to calculate the interest how do you calculate the capitalization rate you take the source you take the amount you take the interest rate and you take the interest right we'll do the calculation okay there are four banks commercial bank of ceylon hnb hsbc the amounts are 40 million 20 million 15 million and 25 million like i told you the total is 100 million interest rate is 10% 9% 12% 15% so you can calculate the interest for the year so 14 to 10% is 4 million no? 20 into 9% is 1.8 15 into 0.12 is 1.8 25 into 0.15 is 3 million and 75 so once you add 11.35 11.35 so now you can calculate the capitalization rate capitalization rate how do we calculate you get the total interest divide by total funds multiplied by 100 so it will be 11.35 divided by 100 into 100 is 11.35% so in a pool of funds you have to take the weighted average cost of capital you have to take the weighted average cost of capital that is what we call the capitalization rate that is something you sub you are supposed to calculate okay right okay so this is just a work in uh, not the final answer okay right let me uh, try to calculate the capitalized interest rate capitalized borrowing cost 
right so they have been asked to calculate the borrowing cost to be capitalized if you look at the period lamai me gaane period deka you are starting the construction from 1st of april so you can continue from 1st of april 2022 right up to 15th may 15th may 2022 if you look at that period right borrowing cost can be capitalized right for this period if you take this period if you calculate the borrowing cost it will be 5 million into 11.35% into the period 1st of april to 15th of march means one and a half months neither one and a half months so how much is that 5 One point half months. I'm getting uh, seventy thousand nine hundred and thirty-eight. Seventy thousand nine hundred and thirty-eight. Okay. Then from fifteenth May to thirtieth May, fifteen days, you cannot capitalize. I take fifteenth May twenty twenty two to thirtieth May twenty twenty two. You can't capitalize. Can't capitalize as uh, unexpected, unexpected delay in materials. This period you cannot take because it is something unexpected. No? Then from thirtieth May twenty twenty two to until the SED is finally ready, right? Thirty first of December. So this period you can capitalize. So it will be five million into eleven point three five into how many months? Thirtieth May, no? June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Seven months. So five million into eleven point three five into seven months. So I'm getting three hundred and thirty-one thousand forty-two plus seventy thousand nine hundred thirty-eight. I'm getting four hundred and one thousand nine hundred and seventy nine hundred eighty. Right. This is the borrowing cost capitalized. Four hundred and one thousand nine hundred and eighty is the answer. Four hundred and one thousand nine hundred and eighty is the answer. Okay. Sorry, ah, uh, I have taken that as five million. No, sorry, sorry, my bad. It's fifty million. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, my sorry. It's not five million. It's fifty million. Let me correct it. Sorry, I have taken that as five million. Fifty million is the correct. Fifty million, na? No? Sorry. Fifty million into three uh, five into one point five divided by seven hundred and nine thousand three hundred and seventy five here. Fifty million into uh, so seven divided by twelve three million three hundred and ten thousand four hundred and 
seventy plus nine thousand three hundred and seventy five. So four million. Nineteen thousand seven hundred and ninety seven hundred and ninety two. Right. Sorry, it was fifty million. I took the as five million seven hundred and ninety two. Thank you. Right, sorry. Right. Good, good, good. Okay. Okay. Okay, so with that, uh, part B is also over. Part B is also over. Okay. Uh, we are moving towards part C of the question. Right. So in your part C, there are three questions. Uh, the company account sum for 25 marks. Then you have the ratio question and the console question. Right. Ratio question and the console question. And we got half an hour, right? We got half an hour to tackle a, I won't be able to do the complete part of it, but uh, as much as possible, we'll try to do, right? Okay, so uh, what are we going to do, right? Half an hour maximum, I'll go for like uh, another 15 minutes, right? So what shall we do? The part C, you all can, uh, Ask for your requirement. We can do the company account sum or the other two questions. May not be able to do the two, but we'll see. Right, quickly. Shall we do the company accounts? So what do you think? Right, company accounts. Right. Okay. Abhilakshini is asking me to do the consolidation company. I'll go for the majority. Right. Lamai, those who are in my physical classes, you all know that uh, on 1st of August, we are having a 100% consolidation session. Right. So we will do a lot of console questions on that day. Right. Ratios and company. I won't be able to do both. Ratios and companies too much with the time allocated, but yeah, with the majority says we'll do the company, right? Okay. Ratios, time, it'll be a little difficult, right? Okay, we'll try to do the company. Cash, uh, ratios, Lama, actually in the class, we did a lot, a lot of ratio questions, right? Section C, we'll do the company account sum. So that'll be good in 25 marks now. Right, okay, right, come to the requirement. Right, look at the requirement. Uh, prepare the statement of loss, statement of financial portion, changes in equity, and the PP note. Okay, we'll start from the beginning. Right, the following information was extracted from books of Shevan PLC. You have the land, building, motor vehicle, office equipment, capital work in progress, and prepayment, inventory, this and that, stated capital, retained earning, revaluation. These items are there. Right. We look at the additional information. We look at the additional information. Right. Inventory asset 31st of March 2023 includes some damaged stock. Costing 3,500. The net traceable value of these stocks is 2.8 million. And no adjustments were made in the books of accounts in this regard. Okay. Entire revenue reserve of 2.1 million represent the land. 
the revaluation carried out on 31st of March revealed that the land value has been increased by rupees 3 million. No adjustments were made in the books on this regard. On 30th September, the company sold a delivery van for rupees 2.9 million. This van was purchased at 1st April 2019 at a cost of rupees 4.5 million. The entire sale proceed was debited to cash book and credited to other income. No other entries have been recorded in this respect. Depreciation is on a straight line basis. They have been given the useful lives. Okay. The income tax of the company for the year of assessment 22-23 is 900. It has been brought to the notice of the company that the customer owing 420 was declared bankrupt on 31st of March. Full provision has been made in the previous financial year in respect of the said customer's balance. A general provision has to be made of 2% from the remaining balance. The company has obtained 5 million bank loan at an interest rate of 10% per annum on 1st April 2022 to construct a new factory building. As at 31st of March 2023, construction is in progress. It was expected to finalize the construction by 31st of December. Cost incurred on construction were recorded under capital work in progress, but the no repayments were made for the loan and interest for the year on the above loan was debited to finance expense. Credited to trade payables account. Okay. They have put that to the trade payables, which is wrong. Uh, one fourth of the bank loan as of 31st of March 2023 should be settled during the next year. One fourth settled during the next year. Prepayment account represents rent payment for the calendar year 2023. The board of directors of the company decided to pay two rupees per share as a final dividend for the ordinary shares. The financial statements so authorized to issue on second of June. Right. Now, am I this part, you are reading the question, highlighting part, you have to do in the reading time. Okay, there is something you are supposed to do in the reading time. Okay, right. So, next part, you will know we have to draft the statements. We will draft the statements. So, this is Shevan PLC. Ivan PLC statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income for the year ended 31st of March 2023 rupees in thousands. It's in thousands. Right? So we'll start. Revenue from that you are supposed to deduct the cost of sales. You'll arrive at the gross profit. Then you will have the other income. Right. Thereafter, you will have the admin expenses, distribution expenses, finance expenses. Other expenses, profit before tax, taxation, profit after tax. Then you'll have the other comprehensive income. Give some space and you'll have the total comprehensive income.
there will be a note for your other income, finance expenses, other expenses. Shivan PLC, statement of changes in equity for the year ended. 31st of March 2023 rupees in thousands. So we have the stated capital, retained earnings, and the revaluation reserve. You have your opening balance, profit. Revaluation minus dividends. Finally, you will have the closing balances. Okay. One PLC. Statement of financial position as at 31st of March 2023, rupees in thousands. Under non current assets, we've got PPE and capital work in progress. Then, under current assets, you've got the inventory. Trade receivables, repayments, cash and cash equivalents. You will have the total assets. Then under equity, you have the stated capital, retained earnings, and the revaluation reserve. And on current liabilities, you got the loan then under current liabilities you got the trade payables you got the loan you got the interest payable you got the tax payable Not number four, not number five, not number six. Right. <laughs> okay, please draft the statements. If you have drafted this part, please uh, give me an indication so that I can draft the remaining requirements. Right, good, 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 okay. Right, okay. Right, so we have the PNL balance sheet 
the changes in equity here, right? So thereafter, we have to put up the notes, right? So, you know, we have to put up the note number one, which is other income. Note number two, we got the finance expenses. Note number three, other expenses. Note number four, I'll take separately. Note number five, we got the inventory. Note number six, we got the trade receivables. Then I'll take note number four here. PPE. So under the PP, we have uh, the cost for the revaluation. We got the land, we got the building, we got the motor vehicle, office equipment, and the total. Right. So there we have the opening balance, additions, disposals, revaluation, and the closing balance. Then we have the accumulated depreciation, opening balance depreciation for the year, disposal, revaluation, and the closing balance. Finally, we will arrive at the netbook value. Then uh, I have the detail expenses statement. For the detail expenditure, I have the cost of sale, administration expenses, distribution expenses, and the tax. So these are the items. Please have the statements ready. Right. So make sure your statements are okay so that we can proceed with the workings. Right, please tell me if you are ready. Good. 
at others can we start the question right okay good right okay so uh, we have done the statements and the workings here all right the additional whatever the adjustments required your notes and stuff so we can start the question right so let me use a different color to make the question right okay we will do the workings Starting with the work in number one, inventory, right? Let's do the inventory adjustment. As per the question, the cost of the inventory, the damage inventory, they are saying the cost is 3,500. Huh? Of the same inventory, the net realizable value is 2,800. That means your NRV loss is 700, right? Cost of the asset is 3,500, but you can recover is only 2,800. So there's a loss of 700, right? Loss of 700. Do I need to give you the double entry? So shall I uh, just put the adjustment as plus minus? Double entry got only the Nathama plus minus with the adjustment together. Do I need to write the double entry or? Shall I put that as plus minus? Because in the exams, you don't have to write the double entry. You have to just put that as plus minus. As a work in, do the calculation. Calculation occur on the work in occur, but put that adjustment as a plus or a minus. Right? Plus minus is okay, no? Right, good, 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 good. Right. So this NRV loss, this NRV loss, one side, it's an other expense, debited to other expenses. On the other side, it's the NRV loss provision which we deduct from the inventory. It's the NRV loss provision that we deduct from the inventory. So debited to other expenses. Go to your other expenses here. We'll put the NRV loss, which is an expense 700. On the other side, we have to deduct that from the inventory, right? So we have the inventory. From the inventory, we have to deduct the NRV loss 700 so debited to other expense credited to nrv loss okay so it, it's easy not so difficult right if it is a it's this is not a complete write-off this is not a complete write-off you are making an nrv provision right so debited to other expenses credited to nrv loss provision this is an nrv loss provision na? this is a provision okay We'll move to the second one. They are talking about uh, revaluation. So it's it's a easy adjustment. There's no calculations required. Entire revaluation reserve 2100 represent the land. This year they have done a land revaluation. It is 3000. It's very easy. No need to put an adjustment work in even. So one side, what will happen in the revaluation? One side land value goes up. Debited to land 3000. Debited to land 3000. Credited to revaluation reserve through OCI and other comprehensive income, you can put land revaluation gain. Land revaluation gain, you'll put 3000. So, debited to land, credited to revaluation reserve. Debited to land, credited to revaluation reserve. Debited to land, credited to revaluation reserve. Okay, debited to land, credited to revaluation, reserve. It's not a difficult one, easy one. Okay, right. We'll move on to the third one. It's a disposal adjustment. It's a disposal adjustment. So I'll put that as working number two. So this is about a disposal. 
in case of a disposal adjustment lamai open up the disposal gain or loss account open up the disposal gain or loss account and to this account we'll pass the entries open up the disposal gain or loss account and to this account we'll pass the entries right it says on 30th september the company has sold the delivery van for 2900 so they have sold the delivery van for 2900 this van was purchased on 1st of april 2019 at a cost of 4500 right now they are saying the cost of this one is 4500 so what do we do for the cost we have to remove it from the ppe and we have to take that to the disposal gain or loss so debited to disposal gain or loss credited to motor vehicle account debited to gain or loss credited to motor vehicle because we have to remove it now from the motor vehicle account you have to remove it and take this to the gain or loss debited to disposal gain or loss credited to vehicle account from the motor vehicle i am removing 4500 credited to motor vehicle debited to disposal debited to disposal okay then not only the cost you have to deduct the you have to remove the accumulated depreciation as well accumulated depreciation as well i'll be taking the opening balance separately and the current year depreciation separately opening balance means from the first of april 2019 up to our financial year is 1st of April 2022, up to the beginning. Then the current year is 1st of April 2022, up until the disposal date 30th September 2022. So I'll be taking separate calculations. There's a reason we'll learn. So how to do the calculation? So here three years now. 2019, 2020, 21, 22, three years. So 4,500, the useful life of a motor vehicle is five years into three, into three. 4,500 divided by five, here we got uh, six months. So I'll be getting the answer. 4,500 divided by 5 into 3, 2,700. 4,500 divided by 5 into 6 divided by 12, 450. So the total accumulated depreciation is 3,150. Total accumulated depreciation is 3,150. There's a reason why we are taking separately the open imbalance, separately the current year part. It will help you to uh, calculate the, do the depreciation work in Lamai. That's why. Okay. When there's a disposal, you need to remove cost of the asset as well as the accumulated depreciation. No? So we just calculated it to be 3150. Let's remove one, huh? right? Debited to accumulated depreciation. If we are removing here, debited to accumulated depreciation, credited to disposal gain or loss. Right, credited to disposal gain or loss. Right. Then they say they have disposed this asset at 2,900. Then, cost again, accumulated depreciation, debited to accumulated depreciation, credited to disposal, gain or loss. They have disposed this at 2,900. Right now, this entire 2,900 is in the other income. If trial balance is in item called other income, you can't put the entire disposal proceed as other income. No? So, we are removing that from the other income account and we are bringing it here. Right? So, uh, debited to other income, credited here, 2,900 from the other income account. Now, the trial balance again, we have removed. From the trial balance, we have removed. Now, let's see how much is the gain. 
අපි බලමු දැන් කීයද මේකේ ගේන් එක කියලා right so we got uh, 3150 plus 2900 minus 4500 so we are at a gain of 1550 ah that we will take to the profit of plus this 1550 we will take that to the profit of loss will take to the profit or loss under the other income category go to the other income here vehicle disposal gain we got uh, 1550 1550 right 1550 vehicle disposal gain is 1550 1550 okay right so we have taken care of the disposal gain adjustment right then the next adjustment is depreciation right working number 3 depreciation so you have to calculate the depreciation for the the building the motor vehicle and the office equipment so what we will do is we will take the balances we will take the balances as per the trial balance we will take the balances as per the trial balance so the building is 25000 motor vehicle is 21000 and the office equipment is 7200 right from this balance you have to remove any disposals if there are any disposal disposed assets if the balance include you have to remove if there are any newly purchased assets you have to remove so there's a motor vehicle 4500 we are going to remove we don't have any new purchases right this question is silent about any new purchases we don't have any right so you can get 25000 here so 21000 minus 4500 right is 16500 7200 for this you will apply the useful life you will do a full year depreciation so the useful lives 25 and 10 25 10 10 so your depreciation will be 25000 divided by 20 1250 16500 divided by 5 3300 7200 divided by 10 is 720 for that you are going to add current year depreciation on disposal so this we have already calculated 450 1250 and 720 okay so how do we calculate the depreciation take the balances given in the trial balance if there are any uh, new purchases or disposals remove them get the assets which we can do a full depreciation then apply the useful life and do a full depreciation for that at the depreciation of current year depreciation of the disposed asset current year depreciation of the purchased asset separately then you can get the full depreciation okay right okay shall we pass the double entry depreciation expenses debited to depreciation expense credited to accumulated depreciation right 
so building motor vehicle and office equipment so the building depreciation building depreciation debited uh, 1250 uh, to the admin expenses 1250 the motor vehicle depreciation debited to distribution expenses 3750 office equipment depreciation debited to admin expenses 720 that will be credited to the accumulated depreciation building 1250 motor vehicle 3750 office equipment 720 720 right okay come is it okay up to now up to now, are you all okay? Good. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Please let me know if I'm too fast or anything. Huh? With that, we'll move on to an easy adjustment. So, working number four is on tax. One of the easiest adjustments. Easy. Now the question says current year tax is 900. Okay. Your current year tax should be 900. How much is the tax expense in your trial balance? Trial balance is a tax expense. Here, income tax paid 800. 800. Tax paid, you know, debit side, it's a tax expense, right? So you need your tax expense to be 900, but uh, tax expense in the trial balance is 800, right? What you need is 900, but you have is 800. Now tell me, is it an under provision or over provision? So I got a difference of 100 rupees. Tax under provision, no over provision. Can anyone tell me? We need our tax expense to be 900. What we have is 800. Under provision, no, it over provision. Those who are in the class, they know. This is under provision. Very good. We have a tax under provision. Na? We have a tax under provision. Easy, right? So what do we do for the tax under provision? Debited to tax expense, credited to tax payable. Easy as that. Debited to tax expense. Here I got the tax part now. So here we have the tax under provision, right? Under provision, debited to tax expense. Another credited to tax payable. Here we got the tax payable. I'll be crediting, I'll put that as plus 100. Debited to tax expense, credited to tax payable. Simple as that. Debited to tax expense, credited to tax payable. Most of the people are struggling a lot in the tax adjustment. Easy. Your current year tax expense compared with what we have in the trial balance for the difference under provision past the entry. All right. Debited to tax expense, credited to tax payable. Okay. Easy. Right. So with that, uh, I'll be moving towards another sheet here to do the work in number five. Work in number five is on debtors. We'll see. Right, the first one. It has been brought to the notice of the company that a customer of him 420 has been declared bankrupt. In the previous year, it has been made a full provision. Okay, so working number 5.1 is bad debt. Uh -huh. The bad debt value is 420. He is fully provided. 
fully provided by right fully provided by right so what do we do here right now for this question i'll give the double entry for you to understand right now when you are making a doubtful date provision la mai what do you do pass a double entry when you make a doubtful date provision when you make the doubtful date provision doubtful date provision ddp what you do is you debit the doubtful date expense and you credit the doubtful date provision right so this 420 has already been expensed to the pnl pnl at then ma charge you ever right right last year they have charged debited to doubtful date expense credited to doubtful date provision earlier you had a suspicion earlier you had a doubt that this data might become bankrupt might become bankrupt so you already made a provision now you know for sure he is bankrupt earlier it was maybe now he is bankrupt so you can't be charging once again a bad debt expense because already you have charged it to pnl so what you need to do is remove the suspicion uh, he is bankrupt so remove the provision debited to doubtful debt provision credit the debtor right of the debtor debited to doubtful debt provision debited to doubtful debt provision credited to your debtor debited to doubtful debt provision credited to debtor debited to doubtful debt provision credited to debtor some people charge this to the bad debt expense huh? this is not a bad debt expense he has been already charged to pnl now right debited to doubtful debt provision credited to debtor right debited to doubtful debt provision credited to debtor i'll be charging uh, i'm going to here i have the trade receivable i have the trade receivable balance from that i'm deducting the doubtful debt provision no doubtful debt provision right doubtful debt provision so from the doubtful debt provision i have to deduct i am going to removing minus 420 and i'll be deducting that from the data minus 420 remove it from the data write off and remove it from the doubtful debt provision remove from the data remove from the doubtful debt provision easy not a difficult one remove from the doubtful debt provision remove from the data right okay right okay so then what do, what do they say about the balance part right what do they say about the balance part right they say right in the question they say right for the remaining data balance for the remaining data balance we have to make a general provision right so we'll take working number 5.2 uh doubtful debt provision we have to make the remaining doubtful debt provision right i will do we'll take the remaining data we'll take the remaining data we'll take the remaining data if you go to the trial balance if you go to the trial balance your trade receivable balance is 24520 from that we have removed 420 no? so 24520 so here the balance is 24100 so your closing doubtful debt provision is 2% on this one 2% 482 
2 percent your close in the output date provision is 2 percent that is what they require that you need to compare with the opening the output date provision so how much is the opening the output date provision we had 520 but remember from the 520 we have removed 420 yeah? from the 520 we have already removed 420 so what remaining is 520 minus 420 is 100 no ah, that means our current provision whatever remaining is 100 we had 520 we had 520 but of that we removed 420 so whatever we have is 100 whatever we need is 82 so 382 we got doubt full debt under so we got doubtful debt under provision 382 doubtful debt under provision 382 doubtful debt under provision 380 Doubtful date under provision 382. So we'll pass the entry. Debited to doubtful date expense. Doubtful date debited to the distribution expenses 100. Credited to doubtful date provision. So, sorry, not the 100, it's 382. Sorry. 382, sorry. 382 is the answer. 382 382 is the answer and credited to doubtful date provision plus 382 okay plus 382 right so we have debited to doubtful date expense credited to doubtful date provision Okay, so we have completed the sixth adjustment as well. Right. Look at the seventh adjustment. Company has obtained a bank loan, which you can see under the loan account, 5 million, at 10% interest on 1st of April at the beginning of the year. Uh, the construction is still in progress. What they have done is, Lamai, they haven't made any repayment. Interest for the year, they have debited to finance expense and credited to trade payables account, which is wrong, no? Right, this is working number six. Bank loan interest. So the bank loan interest is we have this five million loan into ten percent is five hundred no, five hundred. What they have put is right now, this is in the finance expense, and in the trade payables. Both are wrong. Right, interest expense you cannot put to a trade payable, and this is a qualifying asset. No, this is a qualifying asset, right? So, this you have to recognize in the you have to capitalize. No, you have to capitalize why this is a qualifying asset, right? So, what we are going to do is Lamai, right? Since it's a qualifying asset. Since it's a qualifying asset under the borrowing cost, remove from finance cost, and add capital work in progress, right? I'm just giving you a note to understand why we are doing that one, right? So this is a qualifying asset. So what you need to do is, Lamai, you need to debit it to capital work in progress and credit it to finance expense. This is kind of a common adjustment. Huh? Most of the time they are testing. Most of the time they are testing, right? So they will give a capital work in progress, the interest cost, they will be charged into finance, but we have to remove it from there and recognize that in the capital work in progress, the 500. 
right? So we'll at the same time the trade payables. Am I? You can't put it under the trade payables, no. Interest payable, interest payable shall be separately recognized. Shall be separately recognized and removed from trade payables. You can't keep it under the trade payables. Huh? You have to remove it from the trade payables and recognize that as an interest payable. This is not a trade payable. You cannot put that as a trade payable. Right. Let's do what we are going to do. I'm just giving these two notes because this can be tested. Huh? On a qualifying asset, what is a qualifying asset? Asset takes more than six months. This is a qualifying asset. Then the borrowing cost added to the asset. Right. On the other side, it's an interest payable. Right. We pass a double entry. Right. So remove it from the finance cost and debit it to capital work in progress. Right. So I'll be adding this to the capital work in progress plus 500. Plus 500. And I'll be removing it from the finance expenses. I'll be removing it from the finance expenses. From the finance expenses, I'll be removing 500. From the finance expenses, I'll be removing 500. I'll be removing 500. I added to the capital work in progress, removed from the financial expense. Same thing. I'll be removing 500 from the trade payables. I'll be adding that to the interest payable. Removing from the trade payable, added to the, uh, the interest payable. Added to the interest payable. Okay. Right. Finally, the question says one fourth of the bank loan will be settled in the following year. So if you take the bank loan, which is 5,000 of that one fourth. One fourth is 1,250. This is a current liability. Three fourth is 3,750 is a non-current liability. So of this loan balance, 1,250, you are going to pay it in the next year. It's a current liability. Remaining balance is a non-current liability. It's easy, not a difficult one. Go to the non-current liability, 3,750. Current liability, 1,250. Non-current, 3,750. Current, 1,250. Okay. So let us do the working number seven. Working number seven is on prepayment. They are saying prepayments. Okay. The prepayment account represents the rent payment for the entire calendar year. So in our prepayment account, in our prepayment account, we have 240. Calendar year is 1st of January 2023 to 31st of December 2023. They have paid 240. Our financial year ends on 31st of March. Then here we got three months. Here we got three months. Okay. We got three months. Right? Three months. So three months in the sense 200 and 40 into 3 divided by 12, right? So it is 600, no? This 600 you have to charge as an rent expense, right? This 600 is a rent expense because already we have occupied the premises for the first three months. We have already occupied the premises for the first three months. So we can say the entire thing is a prepayment. 
entire thing is not a prepayment. Three months have gone. No? So these three months shall be an expense. So I'll pass debited to rent expense. Debited to rent expense, 600. Credited to prepayment, 600. Debited to rent expense. Credited to prepayment, 600. Debited to rent expense. Credited to prepayment, 600. Sixty, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sixty, my bad. Sorry. Sixty, yeah. Sorry. I took the rest two hundred two thousand four hundred. Sorry, it's sixty, yeah. Sorry. Sixty. Thank you. Sixty. Sorry. I mean, it's sixty, yeah. It's not six hundred, it's sixty. Sixty. Right, 60. Sorry, 60. Debited to rent expense, 60. And credited to rent prepayment, 60. Right. Okay. Look at the ninth adjustment. The board of directors have declared a 2 rupee per share as a final dividend. We know that as per LKS 10, final dividend, you cannot make an adjustment it will be just a disclosure right i'll put it here okay so for the time being i'll erase it here right so working number eight final dividend so you have to write a small note as per lkas 10 Ordinary share final dividend cannot be recognized. Per share dividend. Total dividend and declared date shall be disclosed. Right. Okay. So you cannot recognize, right? Okay, guys. So, uh, ordinary share final dividends you cannot recognize. You have to make a disclosure. You have to make a disclosure. Finally, it says the financial statements are authorized on 2nd of June. There's nothing to do on that. Right? Okay. Right. So, uh, Please take a note on this. You have to write a small disclosure like this in the exam. It's kind of a mandatory adjustment. No? Right, so we have done all the workings. So finally, what we need to do is we have to uh, take the balances from our trial balance. Okay. Okay, so we are here now. We'll start. Huh? So if you look at the trial balance, it says land is 50,000. So open imbalance land 50,000. Buildings 25,000. Motor vehicles 21,000. 
of his equipment 7200 accumulated depreciation building 8500 motor vehicle 11500 of his equipment 2200 Prepayment two forty, so two forty minus sixty is hundred and eighty. So two forty minus sixty is hundred and eighty. Right. Inventory forty one thousand five hundred. Right. Will that will put that one inventory forty one thousand five hundred. Okay. Then uh, stated capital eighty thousand. Stated capital eighty thousand. Retained earnings six thousand four hundred and fifty. Revaluation reserve two thousand one hundred. Trade receivable twenty four five twenty. Twenty four five twenty minus four twenty is twenty four one hundred. Twenty four one hundred, trade payable thirty one two hundred, thirty one two hundred minus five hundred, thirty thousand seven hundred, thirty thousand seven hundred. Okay. Then uh, cash in hand and cash at bank three thousand two hundred and eighty, three thousand two hundred and eighty. Tax paid is your tax expense, no? So your tax expense eight hundred. Interim dividend four thousand. That will that we will deduct four thousand. Good. Cost of sales 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 two seven four five hundred. Cost of sales. I'll put it here. I'll take an item called as per TB. Cost of sale is one nine two three hundred. One nine two three hundred. Other income two thousand nine hundred. We removed. Da. Our idea is not to double it. No. We have removed it. Tax payable six fifty. So six fifty plus hundred is seven fifty. Tax payable seven fifty. Let me put it like this: tax payable seven fifty. Tax payable seven fifty. Six fifty plus hundred. Administration expenses thirty two seven hundred. Administration expenses thirty two seven hundred. Distribution expenses thirty nine eighty. Finance expenses thousand four hundred. Thousand four hundred minus five hundred is nine hundred. Thousand four hundred minus five hundred is nine hundred. Trade receivable allowance five twenty minus four twenty plus three eighty two. We get four hundred and eighty two. Bank loan we took. Bank loan we took. Right. Okay. Once you have taken up all the balances, please give me a confirmation so that we can close the account. If you have done, please give me a confirmation.
right is it okay can you do the finalizing yeah good right so we have completed the part right so we have to close our uh, the additional information and the tables right okay let me close the expenses here yeah, i got uh, 192300 one two fifty plus seven twenty plus sixty plus thirty two seven hundred thirty four seven thirty three seven fifty plus three eighty two plus thirteen nine eighty eighteen thousand hundred and twelve and nine hundred so one nine two three hundred cost of sale one nine two three hundred admin expenses 34730 distribution expenses 1812 tax expense minus 900 okay then we'll take the uh, pp item 53000 25000 8,500 plus 1,250 is 9,750. 9,750. 15,250. 16,500 here. Twelve thousand one hundred here. Four thousand four hundred here. Seven thousand two hundred. Two thousand nine hundred and twenty. Four thousand two hundred and eighty. Seventy six thousand. 930. So the value of the PP is 76,930. Right. 76,930. Uh, sorry, I couldn't put the capital work in progress. No, sorry. No, 7,600 plus 500 is 8,100. Right. Okay. Then uh, I have to close the other income 1550 finance expense done 41500 plus 700 e, minus 700 is 4800 23618 so other income 1550 finance expenses 900 other expenses 100 inventory 40800 uh trade receivable 23680 right okay now you can close the PNL 274500 minus 192300 is 82200 plus 1550 34730 181112 minus 900 minus 100 29 Four zero eight thirty one thousand four zero eight so twenty eight four zero eight here revaluation reserve three thousand eighty thousand eighty thousand 
minus 4,000, 30,858, 5,100. Period capital, 80,000, 30,858, Three thousand seven hundred and fifty interest payable five hundred thirty three two hundred plus hundred and fifty two thousand nine hundred and Eighty five thousand thirty sixty seven thousand eight hundred and twenty eight. So the balance sheet gets tallied at. 152,908. Please check your answers. Balance sheet gets tallied at 152,908. Okay. If you all have complete, uh, just give me an indication saying okay. Right. Okay. Can you show the notes part? You mean this part, right? Because someone is asking to show me the notes, right? Okay, in the meantime, Laman. Now tomorrow, uh, from AAT Institute, uh, they are having a session, but it is more or less, I'll be conducting uh, on the consolidation area, but priority, will be there is bo for both single and english medium so i'll be uh, doing mostly in single medium in that session but if somebody uh, wants to get an idea on consolidation uh, you can join for the tomorrow session which is organized by double at institute itself right okay right so tomorrow double at institute is organizing the console session I'll be doing uh, two questions uh, comprehensively covering the console area. And those who are coming for the physical classes, don't worry. We are going to have the class on 1st of August, where we'll be covering a number of questions, right? And those who are doing the coming for the virtual learning platform, uh, we will be doing the questions in the virtual learning platform as well from the, our video lectures, right? So today, um, we have done uh, 75 marks of the question. I, because of the timing, I couldn't do uh, uh, 25 marks, which is the console part and the ratio, right? Please do that part of the question. Uh, and uh, upcoming classes will be discussing the console part as well, right? 
so i hope uh, you all have learned something from this session uh, in your uh, the chat box you can see there's a link about the uh, today's sessions your feedback i'd really love to see your feedback and even in the whatsapp group if you all can uh, share your thoughts of today's session whether you liked it whether you learned something was it good was it bad right anything to improve so that uh, that will be a really a great thing for us and uh, so you have a very 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 short time period before the exam right so uh, make sure you are going to give your best effort to pass this exam so you are not going to do that with a simple d pass you are going to get a's and you are going to uh, get a higher result you are going to get the maximum of this exam right so please give your best lamai uh, make sure you do this paper again you might see some some of these areas will be touched on the paper right okay so uh, i'm really uh, happy that uh, yeah, i'm getting the comments already in the chat box right please uh, feel free to uh, share the thoughts on the whatsapp group as well because others will also be motivated to join in the other sessions right okay okay thank you manoj right uh, thank you for your kind comments and dilukshi as well right thank you all the students right so that we will conclude our session right uh, then the promised hours we have done extra 45 minutes but uh, i hope uh, it is for the betterment of you and please join with jmc b learning if you are struggling i am the one who will be uh, who is doing the uh, far video pack if you are at, uh, struggling to cover the syllabus if you are finding it difficult you can use the video you can use the videos that i have done uh, which will be helpful for you right okay thank you thank you thank you right so we'll conclude then right so good night